The Life of Anya Forger, Spy Family Anya Forger is the deuteragonist of the Spy Family series. Formerly known as Test Subject 007, she's a telepath whose abilities were created in an experiment conducted by an unknown organization. She's a student in Cecil Hall at Eden Academy and the adopted daughter of Void and Yor Forger. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Anya Forger. If you like this video and other videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. And if you haven't already, check if you're subscribed because only 25% of y'all are subscribed to our channel. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Anya's true origins, as well as the source of her telepathic abilities, are largely unclear. Prior to being found at the orphanage, she was made by accident, an unintended consequence of research experiments conducted by an unknown organization. She was codenamed Test Subject 007 and was treated very strictly by the scientists and forced her to learn how to use her powers, seemingly for the sake of world peace. She later escaped the research facility and moved from institution to institution, seeking someone to take care of her. Several of the scientists seen in her memories are also seen during Bond's time as a Project Apple subject, suggesting a connection between them. Before she met Lloyd, Anya had been fostered and returned four times and transferred between two other orphanages. During this, she went under different surnames and eventually ended up at the Shady Orphanage. In his investigation, Frankie discovers that Anya has no birth records, thus having no known age or birth parents. While little is known about Anya's biological parents, when Murdoch Swan forces her to compare her to Yor, the girl is left speechless and brought to tears as she recalls her mother. This suggests that Anya's mother, or mother figure, had a profound impact on her before her disappearance. Lloyd speculates that since Anya ended up in an orphanage, the situation must not have ended well. She's always seen holding a Chimera doll, later nicknamed Dr. Chimera, in her spy roleplay. According to Lloyd's falsified background, Anya's biological mother passed away two years ago, and Lloyd has been raising her as a single father since then. Her mother's dying wish was for her to attend a good school. Introduction arc. Anya is first introduced to Lloyd Forger at the orphanage, as he's looking for a child capable of reading and writing to enroll into Eden Academy. Anya becomes aware of Lloyd's true identity as Twilight, a spy on a secret mission, by reading his mind and lies about her age and intelligence to persuade Lloyd into adopting her. When they go on a shopping trip, Anya inadvertently exposes her true intellect, or lack thereof, by misreading a bakery sign for bacon and attempting to purchase a one dog poster with a ten pent coin. She bursts into tears when Lloyd considers returning her for another child, only placated once Lloyd buys her a bag of peanuts. She gets tired midway, forcing Lloyd to carry her home while she sleeps. The next day, Anya refuses to study, intending to rely on her telepathic abilities to cheat. After Anya attempts to follow Lloyd outside, he barricades her inside their apartment. Bored, she manages to access Lloyd's spy tools and plays with his radio, unaware her transmission and location were being picked up by Edgar, one of Twilight's enemies. His goons find and kidnap Anya, and he intends to use her as a hostage to blackmail Twilight Twilight into doing their bidding. There, she witnesses Edgar shooting one of his men who suggested he focus on something else besides the foreign minister's hairpiece. Anya is rescued by Lloyd, who sneaks in disguised as one of Edgar's goons. Lloyd attempts to persuade her to go into a police station to be put in a better orphanage. She instead remains and later asks to stay with Lloyd, and they move to a new apartment. Anya acknowledges that Lloyd is a liar, but says that he's a cool liar. Using a copy of the test questions, Lloyd helps Anya to memorize the answers to the entrance exam. During the exam, Anya briefly panics when she realizes she can't use her telepathic abilities to cheat, as the other children are panicked and unfocused. She eventually calms down and remembers what Lloyd taught her. After the exam, they're overjoyed to find that Anya managed to pass, but they soon receive a letter from Eden Academy about the second phase of the admissions process, the family interview. Upon discovering they require a mother for the interview, Lloyd attempts to disguise his informant asset Frankie Franklin as one, but fails. Seeing Lloyd having difficulty finding a wife, Anya asks if she's at fault for keeping the potential mothers away. Lloyd tells her it's not her fault and sends her away to watch television. Lloyd later brings her to a boutique to be measured for clothing, wishing to make her more presentable. When Anya interrupts Lloyd and Yor Briar's conversation, she finds out about Yor's secret job as an assassin through mind reading. Amused by the combination of their secret identities and starved for entertainment, Anya matchmakes the two of them. Before Lloyd attends a party with Yor, he leaves Anya at home with a babysitter. Admissions interview arc. Shortly after Lloyd and Yor are legally married, Anya welcomes Yor to their house and helps her move in. Lloyd tries to do a mock interview as practice, but Yor and Anya are hopeless at answering. Lloyd decides to take them out on a trip in the hopes of cultivating some upper-class knowledge and shared experiences. Anya holds Yor's hand on the way, but runs off in fear when she hears Yor reminiscing about when she accidentally broke her brother's ribs. During their outing, Anya dozes off at the opera hall and runs around the art gallery, pointing at the nude paintings and statues missing body parts. The family attends a political campaign, but leaves after Anya becomes dizzy due to telepathically listening to the large, and they have a meal at a restaurant. Worried about Lloyd, 
Yor brings them to a rooftop she often goes to for her break. After witnessing a thief stealing an old woman's purse, Anya helps locate the man by reading all the thoughts of the people in the area, though she gets a nosebleed from the exertion. She draws Lloyd's attention to the thief by asking for cake and pointing at a cake shop, which is close to where the thief is. After the thief is caught and the forgers return the stolen purse, the old woman expresses her gratitude. As a family banter, she tells them that they look like a wonderful family. At home, Lloyd retries the mock interview with better results. Lloyd prepares Yor and Anya before they leave for Eden Academy. At the gates, Lloyd checks up on Anya to ensure she's okay with the crowd. Following Lloyd's lead, Anya salutes the statue of Eden Academy's founder. Upon seeing a young student stuck in a gutter, Lloyd signals to her, and Anya suggests that they help the boy out. When Lloyd pulls him out, mud is splattered all over his and Anya's clothes, but they get a change of clothes from Yor. When a horde of animals escape from the school farm, the applicants panic and try to run away, causing Anya to become overwhelmed and dizzy by everyone's thoughts. After Yor disables a cow leading the stampede, Anya empathizes with the cow's fear and gently comforts it. Pacified, the cow gets up and returns to its home, along with the other animals. Afterwards, Henry Henderson rushes out to commend their abilities. After successfully making it to the admission interview, Anya and her parents wait to be called in. Anya gets nervous while reading Lloyd's thoughts. Once they're called, the interview begins with questions for Lloyd and Yor. When they interview her, Anya forgets the answer to a question and says Lloyd's thoughts by mistake. Lloyd quickly covers for her and makes up an answer. When the interviewers ask her to give a score to her parents, Anya answers with 100 points. Murdoch Swan maliciously asks her if she prefers her old mother or her new mother, causing her to start crying and calling out for her. Lloyd and Yor are furious at Murdoch and abruptly end the interview after Lloyd smashes the table. The family returns home and Anya apologizes to Lloyd for doing badly at the interview. She's desperate for Lloyd's mission to succeed so they can stay together. Yor encourages them to be optimistic since Henry and Walter Evans like them and they clink their cups to celebrate their hard work. However, a family photo falls as a bad omen. On the day the admissions are announced, the forgers look for Anya's application number on the board and are dismayed when it's not there. As they prepare to leave, Henry stops them and shows a waiting list with Anya's name at the top. Yor imagines killing the parents of another applicant to ensure Anya's enrollment, much to Anya's amusement. Three days later, they receive a call announcing Anya's acceptance into Eden Academy and happily celebrate. Frankie comes over shortly with a bottle of wine to celebrate and suggests that Lloyd give Anya something as a reward. Anya excitedly says she wants Lloyd to do something instead. She shows Lloyd a scene from Spy Wars, her favorite show wishing to get rescued in a castle. Lloyd rents a castle and invites several of his fellow agents to act as guests. Anya designates Lloyd as the spy who saves her and Frankie as the boss of the League of Evil, then hides behind a turned over table as her prison. After Lloyd defeats Frankie and Yortisha, he rescues Princess Anya, who hugs him. Anya tells Lloyd she'll work hard, and they look to the stars while he congratulates her on passing. Eden Beginnings Arc At the same boutique, Anya is getting measured for her new uniform. Anya happily announces that she's grown 2 millimeters since the last time they were there. When the seamstress warns them about kidnapping incidents, Anya becomes fearful and says she doesn't want to go to Eden Academy anymore. The seamstress apologizes for scaring Anya and reassures her. Five days later, Lloyd receives a call from the boutique and asks her to take Anya to pick up her finished uniform there. At the boutique, Anya proudly poses in her new uniform. They stop by the park on the way and Anya shows off her new uniform to the park goers. Yor suggests they go to the market so that she can try cooking dinner. After they finish shopping, Anya goes outside to wait while Yor pays the cashier. While exiting, Anya is ambushed by several delinquents intending to extort Yor for money. Before they can do anything to Anya, Yor chases them off and hugs Anya to comfort her. Anya asks Yor to train her so she can stay strong for school. They return home and Yor trains Anya with physical exercises, much to Lloyd's confusion when he returns home. On orientation day, the forgers listen as a faculty member gives a speech congratulating the new students. Anya reads Lloyd's mind and learns of his plan B, the friendship scheme, which has Anya befriend Damien Desmond, Donovan Desmond's second son, and eventually go to his house where Lloyd can meet Donovan. Thanks to Lloyd's work, Anya is assigned to Cecil Hall, the same class as Damien, and called forward to line up with the other students. Anya stares at Damien, making him think she's interested in him, and she turns away, annoyed. She then meets Becky Blackbell, who she initially ignores after Becky sees her as a baby. After Henry is announced as their teacher, the class leaves for their school tour, and Lloyd thinks about passing the torch to Anya. Having heard his thoughts, Anya stops and salutes him, causing Henry to order her to stay in line. During the tour, the students fawn over Damien and his status as a Desmond. He sees Anya staring at him again and approaches her, asking what her father's job is, then mocks her when she says a feelings doctor. Anya tells Damien she wants to play at his house, but his friends Ewan Edgeberg and Emil Elman tell her off and push her aside. An upset Anya considers punching Damien, but thinks back to your teaching her that when someone is being mean, a cool girl laughs it off, as a smile can stop a fight before it even starts. Anya tries following Yor's lesson, but her smug smile unintentionally enrages Damien, thinking she's making fun of him, while Becky thinks she mistreated
misjudged her and calls Anya grown up. Anya is touched by her compliment and looks back to Damien with the same smile. Setting him off, he starts insulting Anya and Henry calls them out. Damien says she will pay for embarrassing him and Anya thinks Yor was lying as smiling didn't help her at all. The tour continues with Damien's group harassing Anya. Anya shrugs it off with a smile but Becky threatens to tell them off. Damien simply asks if they have proof, elbowing Becky out of the way and he declares that he will bully Anya out of the school so she will never smile again. Emile tells her to cry to her father to make it all better and the friends laugh at her. She smiles again but she's decided that she's had enough. She looks around before punching Damien in the face, sending him flying into a rubbish bin. Henry rushes over to the commotion and Anya immediately tries lying her way out of the situation. However, Ewan and Emile have proof of her attack and Henry asks Anya if she's willing to lie to his face. She starts panicking but remembers another lesson from Yor, that violence is only appropriate to use when saving a friend in trouble. Anya makes up an excuse that Damien stepped on Becky's foot earlier and apologizes for getting angry, moving Becky deeply, who thanks Anya profusely. Henry sees Anya's action of standing up to the boys for the sake of her friend as elegant. Despite this, Henry punishes Anya with one Tunisher's bolt, sparing her from three with his discretion. After the orientation, he informs Lloyd and Yor of her incident. To Lloyd's distress, while the commemorative group photo is taken, the forgers are unable to hide their distressed faces. The next morning, Anya peeks nervously at Lloyd from behind a wall, feeling guilty about her actions. Lloyd reassures her that she can learn to be more careful about fights now. After eating breakfast, Lloyd and Yor prepare to send Anya off on the school bus, and Lloyd reminds her to apologize to Damien. At the entrance, she meets Becky, who is just getting dropped off by her chauffeur. Amazed by her car and driver, Anya begins to call her Milady, and Becky suggests picking up Anya with her chauffeur next time. On the way to classes, they encounter Damien and his friends walking from the school dormitory. Becky bickers with Damien's friends and pulls Anya away in disgust before Anya can apologize to Damien. In class, Anya is ostracized and feared by her classmates due to her punching Damien, with only Becky willing to sit beside her. Anya becomes scared due to their negative thoughts about her, but Becky happily suggests that they become best friends, which causes Anya to tune out their thoughts. During roll call, Anya senses Damien looking at her and turns around in confusion. Anya later falls asleep during class, causing the teacher to think of her as a delinquent. Becky wakes her up to go to science class, and Anya tries to look around for Damien to apologize, but Becky reassures her that she'll protect her, so she doesn't need to apologize. Anya realizes Lloyd has followed her to school in disguise when she reads his mind. Throughout the rest of the day, Lloyd reminds her to apologize by altering her textbook, leaving notes, and writing on her food. When Becky continues interfering with Anya's apology, Lloyd uses the PA system to call Becky to the student hall. With Becky gone, Anya goes to Damien's table to apologize. Nervous from the pressure and telepathically hearing Damien's friends insulting her, she bursts into tears while apologizing. Refusing to swallow his pride, Damien angrily rejects her apology after realizing his developing feelings for her and runs away while blushing profusely, leaving Anya in confusion. At home, Lloyd is tutoring Anya in math to improve her chances of becoming an imperial scholar. She tries to read Lloyd and Yor's minds to get the answer but is overwhelmed by his numerous thoughts, while Yor's thought process goes off on a tangent. Sick of studying? She runs off to her room. Lloyd and Yor try to coax her out with Coco, but she remains in her room. Later on, Lloyd enters her room when she doesn't respond and finds her sleeping at her desk, having studied on her own. He carries her and tucks her into bed while she mutters in her sleep. Secret police are. In math class, Anya confidently states an answer when called upon, but she turns out to be completely wrong. At home, Anya is watching an episode of Spy Wars. She can correctly say that Bond Man's gun has two eighths of ammunition, to Lloyd's surprise. Yor rushes home to tell them that her younger brother Yuri is visiting tonight. Seeing the lovey-dovey marriage kit prepared by Lloyd, Anya claims that her parents will kiss and embarrasses them. While waiting for Yuri to arrive, Anya falls asleep and Lloyd carries her to bed. During Yuri's visit, Anya briefly wakes up from the loud noise caused by Yor hitting Yuri, but quickly goes back to sleep. The next day, Anya discovers her uncle's identity as a member of the secret police by reading Lloyd's mind and is dismayed to find out she missed out on something exciting, despite not knowing what it really means. When she sees Lloyd becoming distrustful of Yor due to her brother's true identity, Anya tries to reassure him, but cannot directly, due to her hiding her powers, and instead says Yor's cooking is bad. Before getting on the school bus, Anya tells Lloyd and Yor to get along. When she returns home, she's happy to see Lloyd and Yor have resolved their differences. Lloyd tells her they have cake, and she becomes excited, causing Lloyd to warn her not to upset the neighbors downstairs. Stella Star Arc Before the start of class, Anya and Becky are arguing with Damien, Emile, and Ewan, while Henry gives a look of disappointment having to deal with her inelegance so early in the day. Anya returns to tell Lloyd a rumor she heard from Becky that she has a chance to earn a Stella Star in PE class. Lloyd doubts this, while Yor is determined to help an excited Anya do well, and they train for the dodgeball game. Yor puts Anya through several training methods and teaches her a killer move. On the day of the game, Anya, Becky, and Damien's gang have a bit of an argument before they line up on the court. Henderson and 
announces that he will oversee the interclass dodgeball match between Cecil Hall and Wald Hall as Coach Bobby is out sick. Bill Watkins, a large muscular student from Wald Hall, starts eliminating all the members of Anya's class, leaving only Anya, Damien, and another student in the Cecil Hall team. While Damien's plans to survive and stand out, Bill decides to go after Anya next. He throws a low ball at her, but she reads his mind and jumps to avoid it. He throws three more shots, but they all miss her, with the final one hitting the unnamed student. Damien compliments her dodging skills while Anya inches closer to out of bounds. Becky notices this and yells at Anya to watch out for the out of bounds line. Anya tries to step back, but trips and falls. Bill sees his chance and hurls a ball towards Anya, yelling DIE at her. Damien looks at Anya pitifully, but ultimately jumps in the way of the ball and tries to catch it. He ends up failing, eliminating himself from the game. Damien realizes that he can't get MVP now, which upsets him. Anya acknowledges his actions and announces that she'll get revenge for his death. She thinks back to Yor's training and uses her killer move, throwing the ball at Bill. She ends up throwing the ball to the ground and it bounces towards Bill, who quickly throws the ball right back and hits her, making Anya's class lose. While the students of Wald Hall celebrate, Anya is comforted by Becky, who congratulates her for her effort. Damien and his friends walk over to Anya and yell at her for wasting his sacrifice like that, shocking Anya while Becky defends her. The next day, Lloyd sees Anya's grades and sees that she's failed all the tests. Lloyd calls out to Anya, who claims to be busy watching cartoons. He turns off the TV and carries her away so that they can study as they promised. But Anya starts throwing a tantrum. They begin studying and Lloyd scolds her for being unable to spell correctly. Yor joins them, takes a look at Anya's test, and compliments her for her score being not bad despite still being a failing grade. Anya had difficulty with the idiom test because she read another student's mind who also failed. She plans to learn who's the best at each subject so she can read their minds for tests in the future. Anya reads Lloyd's thoughts, where he considers the risks of changing her school records to better scores and begins to contemplate whether it's a good idea or not for her to cheat. Lloyd sees her gloomy mood and decides to have her try several extracurricular activities to see what she may excel in, as there's a chance to earn Stella with this method. His plan doesn't work, and, he, and Anya ends up face planting after trying to vault over a box. Lloyd picks her up while she cries, and Yor gives her a jumping rope after she calms down. She gets tangled up when trying to use it and falls to the floor, but tells Lloyd she'll work hard. The next day, Lloyd brings Anya to the city hospital, revealing that community service is another way to earn Stella. Lloyd and Anya receive several assignments, but Anya underperforms in all of them. When Anya tries to run off on her own, the staff excuses her and Lloyd from service. Anya apologizes to Lloyd, but he tells her that everyone makes mistakes and decides to go home. Suddenly, Anya hears Ken drowning in the rehabilitation pool and crying for help. Wanting to save him, she tries to tell Lloyd but stops herself to avoid exposing her abilities. She tells Lloyd she will earn Estella from swimming and runs off to practice at the pool. There, Anya frantically looks for Ken before seeing his air bubbles and hears more of his cries for help. Anya dives into the pool after the boy but is unable to swim and starts losing air. Luckily, Lloyd dives into the pool in time and saves the children. After Lloyd explains the situation to the adults, they praise Anya for her efforts despite her recklessness. At the next day of school, Anya is awarded a Stella Star for saving Ken's life. Becky and Henderson congratulate her for getting the first Stella Star in their grade, while Damien scoffs at her for getting one before him. Back at home, Ken and his family thank Anya. Yor hugs Anya tightly, and Lloyd pats her head, proud of her achievement. Anya realizes she can use her powers to help people, and gets very happy. Yor proclaims that she'll make them a special dinner, but Anya rejects the idea, shocking her mother. Anya arrives at school proudly wearing her Stella Star on her chest. Several students begin talking in awe about how she was apparently the fastest student to get a Stella star. Becky greets Anya, who asks to be called Starlight Anya from now on. Becky states that with this fame, Anya could probably make 100 friends just today. An image pops into Anya's mind of Damien asking her to be friends, and Lloyd praising her for helping to complete his mission. However, Damien instead greets her by telling her not to get too full of herself before walking off which disappoints Anya. Becky and Anya head to their class, where the students immediately begin to badmouth Anya for wearing her Stella Star in class. Others try to assert that the whole incident was faked, and she didn't deserve the Stella Star. Two girls looking for support in this ask Damien what he thinks. To everyone's surprise, Damien defends Anya's achievement, though he's bitter that she got a Stella before him. Becky and Anya head to lunch, where Becky asks Anya what she got as a reward for earning a Stella Star. Anya thinks maybe she could get peanuts, but Becky pushes her to think bigger, like the gift she has got of dresses, tiaras, and a tank. Seeing all the things Becky has gotten makes Anya frightened at the amount of money that the Black Bell family has. Anya decides that she wants a castle, but Becky tries to get her to 
lower her request size. Becky brings up her dog Weasel that she got as a gift, which makes Anya curious. Anya sees Damien and his gang walking by, so she asks Damien if he has a dog. Damien shrugs off the question, but Anya reads his mind and sees him playing with his dog Max. Anya envisions a future where she tells Damien that she got a dog, which makes Damien want to compare the cuteness of the dogs. Lloyd and Anya then head to Donovan and Damien's house, where Lloyd asks Donovan to end this war, thus achieving world peace. When Anya arrives home, she tells Lloyd and Yor that she wants a dog as a reward for her Stella star. Yor tells Anya that taking care of an animal is a big responsibility, but Lloyd tells Anya that he'll give the idea some thought. Lloyd envisions a guard dog that can be used to protect Anya, whereas Yor envisions a dog that would attack and kill Anya. After reading their minds, Anya tells the two of them that she wants a small, cute dog, which makes Yor envision a small dog slashing Anya's throat with a knife in its mouth. Lloyd decides that they should go to a pet shop over the weekend to see what's available. Somewhere else, a large, fluffy white dog's ears perk up as it gets a vision of the foragers happily smiling at him. Before their trip to the pet shop, Lloyd is tasked with an extra mission to take down an arms dealer, which Anya hears about with her mind reading. While she and Yor clean up after eating, she's shocked to hear that Yor is worrying about the smell of blood from yesterday's kill not washing off. Later in the evening, Lloyd returns home to announce a family outing and picks an aquarium after seeing Anya's penguin drawing. He then tells her to look forward to the weekend, which gets Anya excited. On the day of their outing, Anya and Yor see Lloyd's visible exhaustion, but proceed anyway at his insistence. They run into one of their neighbors on their way out, and Anya attempts to help them look normal by explaining that they're all a happy family after hearing Lloyd's concerns. At the aquarium, Anya is amazed by all the marine life and has fun running around. The foragers also run into more of their neighbors, and Anya is amused by Lloyd's thoughts as he attempts to get away from them so he can focus on his latest extra mission. Lloyd takes the group to a penguin exhibit to find a penguin who has important data with it but has no idea where to start looking among the 200 penguins in the exhibit. Seeing her father in trouble, Anya reads the minds of the penguins and hears the thoughts of a coughing penguin, who she points out to Lloyd. Lloyd leaves to investigate, and Anya follows after him. She sees him confront a terrorist attempting to take the penguin, and after Lloyd decides not to pursue him when he flees, Anya decides to do it herself. She manages to catch up with the terrorist and grab him by his jacket arms, then yells to a nearby Yor who's looking for her that she's being kidnapped. Yor rushes in and kicks the man into the ceiling, amazing Anya. After the girls meet up with the neighbors, Lloyd returns with a large penguin plush for Anya, which she happily plays with. She then tells Lloyd to hurry so she can see the dolphin show, and the exhausted Lloyd asks her to slow down a bit. After the family trip, Anya takes a liking to the penguin plush, who she names Penguin Man, and initiates him into her spy agency, and tours him around the house, even introducing Lloyd and Yor as fellow agents. Anya then tries to go to Lloyd's room to see his secrets, but gets caught and reprimanded for trying to enter without permission. Anya starts to cry, and she threatens her to run away. Lloyd and Yor pick up her toys and join in on her spy role play to calm her down. After Anya stops crying, she takes her embarrassed parents to the candy store, and she's cheered up after they buy her a snack. Doggy Crisis Arc Anya, Lloyd, and Yor arrive at Kameno Park, a local pet shop, to get a dog. Anya is excited but sees several ferocious looking dogs prepared by Wise, Lloyd's spy agency. Anya is disinterested in getting such dogs, shocking Lloyd, so the Wise agents inform him of an adoption fair currently being held at the adoption shelter. Before the family heads out, Lloyd receives new orders from Wise, so he tells Anya and Yor to go on ahead to the animal shelter while he uses the bathroom. Having read his mind, Anya backs up Lloyd by saying he will take a while in the bathroom, so they should go ahead, which Yor agrees to do. Anya and Yor arrive at the animal shelter where she runs around excitedly, looking Looking at all the dogs. Yor sternly tells her not to run off on her own, then talks to a worker at the shelter about recommending breeds. Anya looks out the window and sees a large, fluffy white dog walk by. Anya reads his mind and sees herself and her family, piquing her interest in the dog. Anya contemplates telling Yor about it, but decides to leave by herself. Anya heads into a building and finds a handful of dogs tied on leashes, including the white dog. She then overhears Keith Kepler and the other students discussing their assassination plot. While Anya listens, another student, Kurt, catches her and reveals her to the group. They wonder what to do with Anya, and Keith says they need to take care of her and pulls out his knife. One of the students opposes this, but Keith reasons that they need to ensure she doesn't rat them out. However, when he tells Kurt to silence Anya, the white dog jumps in between them to protect her. Keith tells the white dog to step away from Anya so he can kill her quickly. However, Anya reads the dog's mind and sees a premonition showing a phone ringing which takes the terrorist off guard. Right after seeing that premonition, the phone rings with a call from Kim, one of their co-conspirators. After they answer the phone, they notice that Anya and the dog are nowhere to be seen, as they escaped while the group was distracted. Anya rides on the dog's back and escapes the hideout. She wonders how he knew the phone would ring and realizes he can see the future. Anya tries to direct him towards Yor so they can be protected, but the dog heads in a different direction. While initially panicked, Anya gets excited by how fast they're going. She decides to run to the police to save the day, saying that Starlight Anya will shine again. However, the dog inadvertently runs in a circle and back to Keith
Keith and Kurt. Anya tries to turn around, but Keith stops them and tells Kurt to kill Anya. As Kurt gets ready to kill Anya, Yor comes up from behind and knocks him to the ground. She yells that Anya is too young to get married, believing that they were kidnappers she heard about on the news. While Anya is relieved, Keith sends his German Shepherd after Yor, but she makes a scary face at the dog that scares it and Anya, who bursts into tears. The commotion causes bystanders to gather near the alleyway, so Keith runs away. Yor is about to give chase, but stays with Anya to ask what happened. Anya explains the plot with the bomb dogs and how the dogs saved her. After Yor searches the dog for explosives, Anya apologizes for running away. Yor is glad Anya is safe and decides to report the incident to the police, asking Anya what she remembers. While Yor makes her call, Anya sees the white dog looking into the future and reads his mind. She again sees the vision with her family, but it changes with Lloyd disappearing. She then sees a clock tower ringing, followed by an explosion in the city that kills Lloyd. After a news broadcast announces that the terrorists succeeded in their assassination plot with a war bound to happen. Anya is shocked by this and wonders what to do. She thinks about telling Yor but doesn't want to expose her or the dog's powers. Anya decides to run off with the dog to save Lloyd. She tells Yor that she needs to bring Lloyd toilet paper before hurrying to the clock tower. Anya and the dog arrive at the clock tower plaza where Anya tries to figure out when the explosion will happen. Anya tries to remember the position of the clock hands in the vision but realizes she can't tell time. She asks a nearby man when the clock tower bell will ring who says it will be less than 30 minutes. The dog picks up Keith's scent and drags Anya around a corner to hide. The German Shepherd smells and spots the two, but doesn't alert Keith. Before Keith drives off, Anya hears his thoughts about the bomb he planted in the area. Having heard all this, Anya and the dog rush the bomb, located inside a room. Anya reaches for the doorknob, but the dog barks at her to stop, reminding her that opening it would trigger the explosion. Anya climbs through a small window by the door and prepares to disarm the bomb. As she does this, she realizes this is nothing like her cartoons, as all the wires are black. She notices some ketchup on the table and decides to use it to leave a warning about the bomb for Lloyd to find before leaving. The time of the explosion arrives, and the dog's premonition returns to a future with Lloyd alive and well, as thanks to Anya. Anya's message, he prevented the explosion. Anya celebrates with the dog, knowing that they saved the future. Afterward, they head back to the pet shop. Outside the pet shop, Anya and the dog run into Lloyd and Yor, each coming from different directions. Lloyd asks why they weren't at the adoption fair and tells them that and they tell him their excuses. Lloyd then asks about the dog and learns how Yor and Anya got caught in the terrorist crisis. After apologizing for being holed up in the restroom, he scolds Anya for running off on her own but asks if she's okay. Anya tells him that the dog saved her life, which Lloyd thanks him for. Lloyd's handler and another wise agent disguised as SSS agents approach the family and tell them they need to ask the forger some questions. After they answer the questions, handler says they'll need to take the dog because of his connections to the terrorists. However, Anya refuses the idea, telling them that she wants the dog who saved her. Lloyd attempts to convince her otherwise, but Anya says if she can't keep the dog, she'll never go to school again, shocking Lloyd and handler. To everyone's surprise, handler relents. When Anya asks handler if they'll treat the other dogs well, Handler confirms it and asks her to take good care of the dog. As the family head home, Anya proudly thinks about how she saved the world by stopping the bomb and saving her father. The next day, the dog is dropped off at the Forger residence and welcomed by the Forger family. When he starts looking down, Anya asks if he's nervous and assures him that he's part of their family now. He excitedly barks at this, and Anya gives him a big hug. The next morning, Anya learns she'll not be getting a Stella Star for helping to stop the terrorists, as Lloyd states they must keep it a secret for the sake of the East-West relations. Anya decides to continue with the plan of befriending Damien. She plans to tell him she got a dog in the hopes that he'll invite her to his house so they can compare dogs. In class, Anya tells Becky about getting the dog, and Becky invites her to a play date. Hearing this, Anya believes her plan will work and dashes into the hall to find Damien. She tells him that she got a dog, but Damien is indifferent to that information. Anya drops to her knees, feeling the world is doomed because of her failed plan. When Damien decides to ask for the dog's name, Anya enthusiastically stands up, but realizes she hasn't given her pet a name yet calling him dog. He Damien leaves, saying she is wholly unfit to own a pet, shocking Anya. At lunch, Anya struggles to find a name for her dog, and Becky tells her to let her parents handle it. Anya arrives home and gets trampled by the dog, who's excited to see her. Lloyd suggests taking him for a walk, and Yor mentions a dog park by the library. On their way, Anya says she wants to walk the dog, but Lloyd tells her to wait until she's older, so the dog doesn't end up walking her. He clarifies that a dog needs constant discipline, and Anya has a responsibility to take care of him for his whole life. He also suggests using plosives when naming the dog. When they arrive at the park, Anya enthusiastically wants to play fetch with the dog. She throws her boot, hoping that he'll go after it, but ends up doing it herself. She wonders if it's because he has no name yet. So she goes around the park asking dog owners for their dog's names to help come up with one. When the family gets ready to leave, Anya realizes her gloves are missing. The dog
dog sniffs for the gloves and finds them in a bulldog's mouth. Anya tries to get the gloves back, but the bulldog growls at her, seeing it as their possession. Anya's dog scares the bulldog into dropping the gloves, allowing him to pick them up and return them to Anya. Anya imagines a similar scene from Spy Wars, where Bond Man recovered Princess Honey's stomach warmer from the League of Evil, making her realize the perfect dog name. When they get home, Anya wraps a bow tie around the dog's neck and introduces her parents to Bond. The whole family, including Bond, approve of the name. Anya gets out Bond's food and pours it into a bowl for him. While he eats, she sneaks a bite but realizes it doesn't taste good. She notices Bond fidgeting, so she takes him to his toilet where he uses the litter box to poop. The two then head to the TV to watch Spy Wars. While they play, Lloyd tells her to be ready to study once he's out of the bath. While he does this, Anya and Bond fall asleep curled against each other on the floor after playing. Charmed at the sight of this, Lloyd and Yor agree to give Anya a pass from studying for the night. Midterm exams arc. While waiting for Yor to come home, Anya sits with Bond and asks Lloyd when they can eat. When Yor arrives, Lloyd asks if she'd like dinner, but she declines and tells him and Anya to eat without her, as she's not hungry. As Yor walks to her room, Anya reads Bond's mind to see a vision of Yor crying, which makes her wonder why. The next day, while Lloyd is training Bond, Anya tells him that she's hungry, causing him to realize how late it's gotten. Yor arrives shortly after, and and proudly announces that she'll be making dinner. To Anya and Lloyd's shock, she cooks a southern stew and after hesitantly taking a bite, Anya and Lloyd are surprised when it's good and tells it to Yor. While they enjoy their food, Yor starts crying out of happiness. Afterwards, Yor presents them with her Yor Forger original dish. Anya and Lloyd excitedly eat it before collapsing to the ground. One day, the Forgers head to the playground for their outing and Anya spots a dejected Frankie across the street. Lloyd asks Frankie about how his date invitation went and while Frankly confidently claims it went well, Anya hears his true thoughts and pats him in pity. Lloyd has Yor look after Anya at the playground while he consoles Frankie, leaving the two to have fun there. Becky greets Anya as they head to school for the morning. Becky asks if Anya saw the latest episode of Berlin in Love that aired last night, but Anya replies that she only watches cartoons. Becky begins talking about how childish Anya is for not even knowing what love is. Anya sees Damien and his friends behind them and has a plan to befriend him. Yesterday, she had a new family photo taken with Bond so she could impress Damien with him. She drops the photo on the ground and brings attention to him. However, Damien and his gang walk ahead of them, ignoring her. Becky picks it up and after seeing Lloyd, is smitten by his appearance. Becky keeps the photo for herself and runs off with it while Anya tries to get it back. The students go to their arts and crafts class, supervised by Henry as the art teacher's sick. For their class, they are assigned to make a three-dimensional model with the provided materials, the theme being animals. Choosing the groups at random, Henry puts Anya in Damien's group. Because Becky still has the family photo, Anya decides to make a Bond model for Damien to see. After finishing her paper bond, Anya shows it off to Damien. Indifferent to it, Damien asks if she always names her garbage, putting Anya into despair. Anya reads Damien's mind and sees his desire to make a griffin model based on his family crest and show it off to his father. Anya decides to create Operation Griffin, imagining herself helping Damien make the model and showing it off to his father with him. Anya tells Damien that she will help him and he can use all her paper, which shocks him as he didn't expect her to submit her bond model. Anya tells Damien that she just wants to help him, which makes him blush. Damien instructs Anya to make the hind legs of the griffin and gives her the plan for the model. She instead proceeds to make jet engines, which angers Damien. He tells her instead to make feathers for the wings, to which she makes a few different sized slips of paper. He shouts at her for wasting his paper and brings the attention of Henry, who tells him off. While the students continue working on their art projects, Anya decides to convert her Bond model into a small female griffin to pair with Damien's griffin, an apology for the wings. After submitting their projects, Damien and Anya learn that his art project won for prize, as the people who saw it believed it was a powerful vision of the nation's rebound from war. Anya tells Damien that his parents will probably be proud, but Damien tells her that he has no intention of showing the art to his parents. Anya is shocked by this outcome and declares Operation Griffin a failure. When Lloyd and his handler Sylvia Sherwood meet up for his status report on Operation Strix, Lloyd reports that Anya can now jump over two vaulting boxes and can jump rope five times in a row, which astounds Sylvia. Henry announces to the students that their midterm exams will be in two weeks. He says the top two students in each subject will receive a Stella Star, while students who fail an exam will receive a Tonitris Bolt for each failed one. Henry proceeds to return their history quizzes from the day prior and is disappointed to show that Anya got 13%, telling her to stay after class for remedial lessons. Meanwhile, Damien got 91%, which he brags about to Anya, to her irritation. In her remedial class, Anya realizes she should read Damien's mind when taking history quizzes and tests and begins laughing to her herself, upsetting Henry, who gives her extra homework. On the bus ride home, Anya 
Anya notices the full moon and starts panicking. Rushing home, Anya asks Lloyd what phase of the moon will be in two weeks, to which he replies, the new moon. Anya is shocked by this, as her power will not work on the day of a new moon due to her weakness known as eclipsing. Meanwhile, she'll be unable to cheat during the exam. Anya attempts to get Bond to show her the questions from the future, but instead sees her dinner for the night, hamburger steak. Distracted, Anya forgets about her worries for the rest of the night, then wakes up anxious the next day, realizing she hasn't studied yet. Lloyd attempts to help her study, but he ultimately makes no progress. Yori remembers that Yuri had offered to help Anya study, so they call him over. Yuri arrives and Anya attempts to read his mind and is overwhelmed by his thoughts about Yor. While Lloyd and Yuri chat about the recent peace talks, Anya reads their minds and is excited over their secret identities. Lloyd takes his leave to do some errands, but not before telling Anya that she and Yuri should get to study. Yuri starts by giving her hard problems to solve, and Anya gets them correct by reading his mind and surprising him and Yor. Anya is asked why she even needs to study, but after remembering her eclipsing, she tells Yuri it was dumb luck, which he hesitantly accepts. They try studying again, but Yuri gets upset after realizing she's not that bright. However, when Yor asks Yuri for help, and Anya exaggerates her love for her, Yuri begins being kinder with his critiquing. The two continue studying, but after hitting some roadblocks, Yuri questions if Anya likes to study. Anya questions him right back after saying she hates it, to which he replies that he studied hard so that he could take care of Yor. Yuri explains to Anya that knowledge is power, and she can be or do anything she wants if she studies. Anya gets confused when Yuri tells her that it's the whole enchilada, mishearing it as a swole chihuahua. Despite that, she gets very excited about the concept of studying, and the two intensely continue their work. After an exhausting studying session, Yuri questions whether Anya has mastered grammar yet, to which Anya asks what grammar even is. Realizing he had wasted his time, Yuri angrily storms out of the house, but returns for a brief moment to eat all the cookies Yor had just baked. Anya contemplates the idea that if she had been smarter, she could have been able to disarm the bomb herself during that terrorist incident. Anya decides to study hard by herself. Lloyd returns home later to learn that she had been studying a beginner foreign language workbook, a subject that's not part of the midterm exams. Two weeks later, the students at Eden Academy sit in an exam hall and prepare to take their exams. Anya gives Becky a statement of confidence and says that she's ready to blow her away with her swole chihuahua before Henry starts their exams. After the midterm scores are posted in the quad, the students gather to find their score placement. Anya already knows she did not fail despite not doing very well in the tests. Becky finds Anya placed at 213th out of 228 students, and Damien attempts to console her before leaving. Despite Anya being proud of her achievement, Lloyd decides to be stricter with her studies. In his thoughts, Lloyd says Anya's efforts barely kept Operation Strix alive. After hearing this, Anya gives him a smug smirk, and in response, Lloyd tells her to think about her grades, and they'll see if she'll be smirking after the study session, to her shock. With midterms over, the students of Eden Academy are cleaning the school grounds, and Becky comments to Anya about how things have calmed down. Anya says that Lloyd is probably more relaxed since she dodged getting a tonnage's bolt, which makes Becky ask whether he gets strict or angry. Anya tells her that he's a monster, which Becky sympathizes with having parents with high expectations, but also finds the idea of a monster Lloyd attractive. Their conversation is interrupted by Damien, who performs a move he calls Desmond Style Rolling Sweep, flinging a bunch of dirt into Anya and Becky's faces and causing them to cough. Emil and Ewan both compliment Damien on his cleaning skills. A bunch of other students also surround him and shower him with compliments, and ask about having a study group with him before the next exam. Becky annoyedly looks at Damien and complains about how obnoxious he is, but Anya says she wants to go to Damien's study group. Becky pauses for a moment, and then comments that she forgot Anya had a thing for Damien, making Anya wonder what this thing is. Suddenly, Anya overhears the thoughts of a boy saying, I will never forgive you. Anya asks Becky who the boy is, and learns he's George Gloomy from their class. George questions how Damien was able to get a Stella star despite having his butler hire a spy to change Damien's test scores to make him fail. Anya is shocked to learn that the person who hired Daybreak was one of her classmates. Becky asks Anya if she likes Damien, but Anya ignores her and says she wants to know more about George. Becky is shocked, believing that Anya will just fall for any guy, and tells her that she should stay away from George because of how gloomy he is. Anya watches as George tries to get Damien expelled by framing him for smoking and punching him. When the teacher demands an explanation from Damien, Anya comes to Damien's defense and tells the teacher what happened. Intimidated by Anya and her reputation, the teacher leaves and tells the students not to call him over for nonsense again. Damien is stunned, and Anya tells him that his expulsion would only hurt her too, while her true motive is to keep Plan B going. Becky squeals, believing this was some romantic moment between Anya and Damien. Damien and George both question Anya on why they helped Damien. Damien then turns and asks George why he's trying to get him in trouble. George explains that his family company went bankrupt, and claims that the Desmond Group, Damien's family business, drove it out of 
business. George then says that with the family business gone, his family will be out on the streets and his life at Eden Academy will be over. Pitying George's situation, the students of Cecil Hall indulge in his final wishes before he leaves Eden, and even Anya assures him that he'll be alright if he ends up going to Westalis. Seeing this, George is happy about all his classmates being so nice to him. George bursts into tears and asks for one last request, to sing the school chorus with everyone. Becky is the first to start singing, to Anya's surprise, and eventually everyone from Cecil Hall except Anya sings the chorus together. Afterwards, the students give George one of their belongings as parting gifts to remember them, while Anya gives him a leaf she found on the road. The students wish George a grand farewell and tell him that he'll always be a part of Cecil Hall. Returning home, Anya recounts what happened with George to Lloyd and Yor. While Yor is touched, Lloyd wonders aloud how Gloomin Pharmaceuticals being bought out is the same as going bankrupt. The next day, an embarrassed George returns to school, and as his classmates remind him of his debt to them, Anya simply pats him on the shoulder. Campbell Dawn Tennis Art For their upcoming social studies project, Henry instructs the students to investigate an occupation that interests them. He suggests various methods and adds that they will each prepare a report for their chosen profession and present it to the class on Friday. Anya returns home to choose Yor for her job investigation and explains how it works to her. As Yor is briefly confused about what to do and which job she should talk about, she imagines bringing Anya to her secret job as an assassin, which Anya dressed in a similar assassin outfit as Yor's. In this scenario, Yor helps Anya with her assignment by explaining and thoroughly demonstrating her work conduct and killing methods to Anya. After Yor kills her imaginary target, a blank-faced Anya is splashed in blood. Yor asks if she's alright, then says they'll tell Lloyd that they were at a tomato festival. Back in reality, the two agree that Anya should make her report on Lloyd's job. When Lloyd returns, Anya asks him to bring her to his work for her project, and he agrees. Two days later, Lloyd brings Anya to the Berlin General Hospital, where he works as a psychiatrist. Anya dresses up as a detective, stating that's how investigators dress. While showing Anya around the hospital, Lloyd answers her interview questions, but she listens to and records his thoughts relating to his work as a spy instead. They then run to the staff who start doting on Anya and give her candy, much to her pleasure. When she asks what Lloyd is like at work, they say he's a polite and humble man that is very popular around the hospital, so much so that he was invited to play golf with the hospital's director. Lloyd tries to emphasize the importance of building relationships to Anya, but she gets distracted while eating the candy given by the staff, and they continue to indulge her causing an irritated Lloyd to finish the interview. As the staff leave, Anya tells Lloyd she wants to see him work. Lloyd instead shows Anya one of the empty consultation rooms, where she begins to fiddle with a bookshelf in boredom. Lloyd quickly stops Anya, revealing an emergency escape route for when he goes on missions in the bookshelf through his thoughts. After a wise colleague knocks on the door, Lloyd tells Anya that something urgent has come up and asks Anya if she wants Lloyd to have Yor pick her up. Anya says she'll wait for him, so he provides her with a sand table to play with while she waits. Lloyd warns her not to touch anything else, and leaves. Anya quickly gets a scheming look after he leaves. Anya pulls a lever hidden in the bookshelf, revealing a ladder leading below the room. An excited Anya investigates the escape route, squeezing past a tight passage before she hears a voice from a vent. Down below, several men are having a meeting about the neuroscience behind paranormal perception. Anya is excited about ghosts and lies down to listen, accidentally hitting a metal pipe. The men are confused about the sudden noise but nervously dismiss it. Anya remembers she needs to return before Lloyd does. However, she realizes her leg is stuck under a pipe and struggles to get free. Her sounds are mistaken for a ghost and the men are spooked. She eventually escapes, then hurries back. Anya returns in time when she hears Lloyd's thoughts as he returns. She quickly makes something on the sand table before he comes in. Lloyd analyzes her sand table to observe her subconscious mind, but is shocked by her sand table being utter chaos. Lloyd starts believing Anya is subconsciously stressed by her recent adoption, blaming himself for failing as a parent and a spy, and decides she needs immediate care. Anya tries explaining that she mixed it all up, but flushes in embarrassment at Lloyd's thoughts. Lloyd suggests that they buy the new spy wars on the way home, and offers to work on the report together. He picks up her notebook to read, causing Anya to panic as notes of his spy work is written there. However, Anya's writing is unreadable to Lloyd, so Anya says she'll work on the report herself. When they return home, Yor asks if Anya managed to see Lloyd perform his concussive therapy, describing the way he punches and kicks and leg sweeps his patients. Lloyd tries to explain to Yor that it's only for extreme circumstances. On Friday, Anya reads out her report to the class. While initially presenting Lloyd's job as a psychiatrist, Anya starts mentioning how Lloyd is determined to make connections plays golf at his job, and uses a secret escape route. Anya adds that he sometimes punches and kicks his patients, shocking Henry. When Lloyd is summoned to the school, he manages to talk his way out with his equivocation skills. Lloyd and Anya take Bond for a walk, 
but return early when it looks like it's about to rain. Anya bursts into the home and announces her arrival, then sees Fiona Frost, Lloyd's co-worker, inside talking with Yor. Fiona dropped by to return Anya's magnifying glass, left behind at the hospital. Lloyd and Fiona start communicating secretly, and after reading their minds, Anya is shocked to learn that Fiona is also a spy. When the agents start arguing, Anya wonders if she's a bad guy. However, Anya reads her mind and is stunned to learn that Fiona is deeply in love with Lloyd. After everyone sits together for some hot bevies, Yor serves Anya hot cocoa. Anya is amused while reading Fiona's thoughts, but accidentally spills her cup on the table. Fiona sees how clumsy Anya is and imagines herself training Anya and transforming her into a skilled child and a Stella Star procurement machine. Reading her mind, Anya decides she cannot let Fiona become her mother. Anya begins clinging to Yor and calls her the best mother in the whole world for wiping up her cocoa. Fiona tries to appeal to Anya by offering imported cocoa, but Anya hisses at her angrily, shocking everyone. After being told to go play with Bond, Anya talks about how happy and lucky she is to have her family. Moved by Anya's words, Yor tells Lloyd that she'll try harder for the family. Lloyd smiles and tells Yor that she works hard enough as Anya cares a lot about Yor, and the family gather together with smiles on their faces. Anya then watches as Fiona gets up and abruptly leaves the house. One night, Bond and Anya watch a cartoon and are shocked when the penguin character dies. Before she sleeps, Anya requests to sleep with her Penguin Man plush for the night. In the morning, Anya is horrified to find that Penguin Man had been killed. When Lloyd points out the claw and bite marks on Penguin Man, Anya reads Bond's mind and finds that Bond attacked Penguin Man out of jealousy. Anya declares that she hates Bond, which shocks and saddens the dog. After Yor fails to fix Penguin Man, Lloyd tells Anya he can buy her a new one, but Anya cries that she loves it because it's a gift from him. Lloyd is touched and decides to sew it up. While Lloyd fixes Penguin Man, Anya does her homework while still sobbing. When he returns the repaired Penguin Man to Anya, he tells her the stitches are badges of honor and proof of Penguin Man's fight for peace, which impresses Anya. Bond approaches Anya with a bag of peanuts, asking for forgiveness. With advice from Lloyd, Anya is able to forgive Bond for hurting Penguin Man, and she apologizes for what she said, and the two happily reconcile. Lloyd decides to practice for an upcoming tennis competition he'll be attending with work associates, and Anya and Yor join him in the practice after Anya demands to play as well. Anya plays tennis at the park with Bond and Yor. Anya calls out to Yor as the tennis ball bounces towards her from where she and Bond Forger are standing. Yor, lost in thought, takes a second to react before grabbing the ball. Anya questions whether she was daydreaming or not, which Yor denies. Anya then reads Yor's thoughts about Lloyd and Fiona's relationship and what it means to her. Anya is shocked when Yor considers getting rid of Fiona, but assures her mother that she has nothing to worry about. Yor questions what Anya meant by that and wonders if she knew what she was thinking. Realizing her mistake, Anya covers it up by telling her not to worry because Lloyd will win and bring home the trophy. Yor smiles and agrees that Lloyd can accomplish anything and will give any opponent a beatdown. After Lloyd's competition, Yor, Anya, and Bond are still at the park playing tennis. Anya and Yor are surprised when Fiona and Lloyd appear, and Lloyd explains that she gave him a ride back. Fiona asks Yor if she plays tennis, and Yor explains that she and Anya practiced with Lloyd the other day, and Anya proudly states that she hit many home runs. Suddenly, Fiona challenges Yor to a game. Anya reads Fiona's mind and sees her plan to have Yor relinquish her role as the mother. She then reads Yor's mind and sees her belief that if she declines or loses, Lloyd will report her to the SSS for being a weak tennis player and replace her with Fiona. As Yor accepts Fiona's challenge, Anya sees the tension between the women and recalls Becky telling her about a love rivalry from her favorite show. Relating this to the current situation, Anya says she now understands what Becky was talking about, saying that she likes action battles too. As the game starts, Lloyd and Anya watch as Yor's serve breaks through Fiona's racket, completely and utterly beating her. Fiona declares Yor the victor for now, but will one day challenge her to a revenge match before driving off, while well, Anya thinks about how energetic Fiona is. After Yor declares her victory to Lloyd, Anya says she's hungry, and an exhausted Lloyd replies he'll get something delivered. Sometime later, while Lloyd attends his briefing, Anya is with Yor at home while she plays with Bond. While Lloyd decides to take Yor on a night out to clear up a misunderstanding, he has Frankie come over to watch Anya and Bond. Anya and Bond happily play with Frankie, and after he receives a payment from Lloyd, he takes them to the park. Later in the evening, Anya waits for Lloyd and Yor to return and notes how late they are, suggesting they are shacking up together. Frankie asks where she learned that phrase, and she says it was mostly from Becky. Frankie then asks if Anya likes her parents, to which she replies that she loves them. Soon after, Lloyd and Yor return home, and Anya begins to ask if they were smooching, but stops when seeing Lloyd with a swelled up chin. Anya teases his appearance, calling him a chin monster while Frankie lifts her so she can try touching it. She later helps a tipsy Yor when she brings everyone tea. Imperial scholars mix her art. Anya watches
watches Damien and his friends from a corner and recaps her goal to become an Imperial Scholar and help Lloyd with his mission. However, Anya has all but given up on earning eight Stella Stars, discouraged by her lack of progress in academics and sports. Anya resolves to plan B, befriending Damien, which is not going any better. While Anya thinks, the boys notice her staring and yell at her to go away. Anya expresses her frustration and Becky appears and agrees, albeit for romantic reasons. Becky says she knows how Anya feels as love is hard to communicate, making Anya think about what she loves. Lloyd, Yor, Bond, Peanuts, and Cartoons. When Anya applies this to Damien, she bluntly denies it, and Becky assumes she's being bashful. Becky decides to help make Damien fall for Anya. She says boys are easily fooled by outward appearances, so if Anya dresses up all cute, Damien is sure to fall for her. Thus, Becky and Anya go on a shopping trip on the weekend. The girls are driven by Martha, Becky's butler, to the shopping center, where Anya is excited to be riding around in their fancy car. Becky complains about not seeing Lloyd when she picked up Anya and how tough of a rival Yor will be after seeing how pretty she is. Becky also compliments Anya's bag, by working class standards, and asks what's inside. Anya produces a large wad of cash, shocking Martha. Before leaving for work, Lloyd had gifted the spending money to Anya, who is shocked by the amount. Anya wonders how many peanuts she can buy with the money, but Becky reminds her that they're shopping for clothes. At the shopping center, the staff treats Becky like royalty, and Anya is surprised by all this. She asks how much money Becky brought, and she replies that she has never brought money anywhere in her life. Becky tells Anya that the store usually brings stuff to her house, but she was so excited to go shopping with Anya that she reserved the whole store. With that, Becky helps Anya find a look that even Damien cannot resist. Anya Anya tries on various stylish outfits while Becky shares her thoughts. Afterward, Anya gets exhausted and remarks that fashion is hard. After Anya points out that Damien won't be able to see her new clothes since she wears her uniform at school every day, Becky says all the halls throw parties at the end of the term, where students will be allowed to wear street clothes and with the teacher's permission. Becky realizes that if the parties are open to parents, Lloyd will most likely be there. She shouts that she needs something too and tries on different outfits, wondering what Lloyd would like. Becky concludes that she doesn't even know anymore and decides to buy them all, much to Anya's shock. Becky asks what Anya's decided on, but she says she can't look at clothes anymore, so Becky says that they can check out the shoes. The girls check out all the accessories at the store while the boxes Martha carries continues to stack up. They stop at a cafe to rest and have sweets. Becky remarks that Anya didn't get anything, and Anya says that she doesn't even know what she wants, reiterating that fashion is hard. Becky looks quietly, then shyly asks if Anya had fun shopping. Anya smiles brightly and tells Becky that she had so much fun, as this is the first time she had gone shopping with a friend. Touched to be called a friend, Becky decides to find something Anya wants, while Martha watches from the side with a smile. The girls head to a stuffed animal shop, but a sheep keychain catches Anya's attention. Anya asks what the sheep is, and Becky explains that it's the department store's mascot. Seeing how cute it is, Anya decides to buy one, while Becky remarks on how childish Anya is. Anya says it will be a memento for their shopping trip and proof that they survived. Becky seems hesitant about the idea, but before she can voice her opinion, Anya buys one for herself and for Becky. Martha urges her to accept the gesture of friendship, saying her father would say the same. So an embarrassed Becky then takes the keychain. She asks Anya why they went shopping in the first place, and Anya says she forgot. They brush it off and decide to head home, where they fall asleep on the drive back. Returning home, Lloyd is stunned to see the keychain, which costs 300 dog a piece, while Anya happily tells him that it's her and Becky's special thing. At the start of school, Becky and Anya greet each other and cheerily talk about their matching keychains. Passing by, Damien and his friends see the girls chatting. The sight of bright smiles on their faces catches Damien's eye. One of the boys asks Damien what's up with him, and he dismisses them in embarrassment. On the day of the Imperial Scholars Mixer, Anya reads Damien's mind and learns of his plan to meet with his father. Seeing that her plan to win his heart with fashion failed, she decides to tail Damien and face the super boss herself. The boys have already noticed Anya following them, so Damien yells at her to go away. Ewan and Emil tell Damien that Anya might be chasing him to curry favor with his father. Embarrassed and enraged, Damien calls Anya names before running away. Anya suggests punching him again, but Becky, who has been with her the entire time, reminds her that she'll get expelled if she does. Suddenly, Anya hears Twilight's thoughts, expressing his frustration at how Anya and Damien are not getting along and that Plan B is failing. Hearing her father's plan to follow Damien, Anya runs off to do the same saying they'll fight the super boss together. When Damien decides to turn back after changing plans, he's stopped in his tracks by Anya, who can't let him do that. Damien calls Anya a stalker, but she smugly taunts him, asking him if he's scared. 
Damien wonders if she's reading his mind, causing Anya to worry. Anya nervously reveals that Damien got 50 points on his reading test. When asked how she knew, Anya says she peeked over Damien's shoulder, making Becky think Anya really is a stalker. Anya says Damien is scared his father will find out about his poor grade and tries empathizing with him, admitting to getting 17 points. Anya says she doesn't know if Lloyd likes her, so she's also scared to tell him. Despite that, Anya believes in her father because she loves him, so she'll use all her courage to tell him that she failed. Everyone stares at Anya in confusion, and she asks Becky what she was just talking about. Despite that, she manages to convince Damien to wait for his father after all. In the courtyard, Becky is surprised that Anya is waiting for the mixer to end, as she just wants to go home. She assumes Anya is eager to meet Damien's parents because she wants their blessing to marry, misreading her seriousness. Becky decides to wait with Anya, hoping to see the big moment with her own eyes. Anya Anya falls asleep shortly after, and Becky realizes her mistake. She asks a nearby Martha to take Anya back to their car as they prepare to leave. In a sleep, Anya is dropped off at the forger home by Becky and Martha, to your surprise. When Lloyd returns home from the mixer, he finds Anya and Bond asleep on the couch. Anya mutters for Lloyd to wait so they can fight the super boss together, and Lloyd has no idea what she's babbling about and thinks about how carefree she is. Lloyd and Anya spend their night on the couch watching TV, and Anya asks Lloyd to change the channel so she can watch cartoons. Bored of the news. Lloyd initially refuses but relents after seeing Anya get teary-eyed. As Anya happily watches Spy Wars, Yor arrives home with groceries and a terrible look on her face. Reading her mind, Anya learns that Yor is in great pain after taking a gunshot to the butt. Anya is shocked and asks Yor if she'll die, and Yor replies she'll be fine before heading to bed. And Yor replies that she'll be fine before heading to bed. Anya is amazed by her mother's feet, but as she hears Lloyd wondering why Yor is upset, she thinks about how off the mark he is. The next morning, Anya wakes wakes up to see Lloyd inviting Yor out on a date and is excited to come. To her shock, Lloyd informs her that she can't come, then has Frankie come over to babysit her. Anya watches her parents start off their date terribly, and she expresses worry for them. Remembering a scene from Spy Wars, she proposes to Frankie that they shadow Lloyd and Yor on their date. Frankie happily agrees, and the two get into disguises to hide from Lloyd's watchful eye. Anya and Frankie proceed to follow Lloyd and Yor throughout the date and see Lloyd continuously fail to cheer up Yor. Frankie is gleefully amused by this, making Anya ask if he has bad personality. Frankie argues that he's allowed to make fun of Lloyd as someone who can't get girls, which Anya calls pathetic. After Lloyd and Yor head into an expensive restaurant, Frankie and Anya attempt to follow but get rejected due to their casual clothing and Anya's young age, which upsets her. As she and Frankie prepare to return home, Anya hears the thoughts of someone recognizing Yor as the Thorn Princess. The thoughts are from the waiter inside the restaurant, a survivor of the Red Circus group Yor massacred the day before who is now plotting to avenge his comrades by killing her. Although Anya knows Yor can likely take care of herself, she worries that Yor will expose her identity and cause Lloyd to break up the family. At her insistence, Frankie and Anya decide to infiltrate the restaurant in spy get-ups. They enter the restaurant through the vents, and Anya is in a hurry to save her mother as she hears that the man has poisoned Yor's drink. Anya is too late to stop Yor from drinking the poison, but is dumbfounded when she discovers that it has instead cured Yor of her pain. Anya then hears the waiter hatching a new plan to kill Yor by creating a makeshift bomb with items from the storeroom which Anya is above. Anya exits the vents, and listening to the bomb instructions the waiter thinks about, creates a non-lethal peanut bomb while setting up a few booby traps for the man on his way to the storeroom. After the waiter finds the bomb and gets caught in the explosion, Anya reveals herself while pointing a toy gun at him. She tells him to stay away from Yor and abandon his life of crime to make his girlfriend happy, which shocks him. Anya then returns to Frankie, and they leave the restaurant to continue shadowing Lloyd and Yor, with Anya proud of herself for Yor acting back to normal. She then reveals herself from hiding after Yor and Lloyd talk about going to a carnival, wanting to ride a ferris wheel. While Bond sprawls on the couch, Anya asks if he could be any lazier. After Yor tells her to do her homework, Anya goes to her room to get it done. After Bond receives a vague vision and believes he will die soon, he goes to Anya's door to say goodbye. To Bond's shock, Anya says she's busy with homework and doesn't have time to play, shutting the door on him. Bond later concludes that he'll die if he eats the dinner Yor will make for him, and fears he will be killed if he refuses, in part due to an exaggeration Anya made about Yor. This fear prompts the family pet to run away to find Lloyd so he can make his dinner instead. After Bond succeeds in his goal, 
he has a future vision of the family watching him as he enjoys dinner, with Anya present among them. When Yuri visits the Forger home to see Yor after a complicated mission, Anya reads his mind and gives him a consoling pat. After Yor praises Yuri for working hard, his thoughts become full of his sister, overwhelming Anya. On their outing to the department store, Anya sees large electric plush animals to ride on and tells Lloyd she wants to ride the panda one. Lloyd goes into a long monologue in his head, thinking about how pointless they are. Anya begs to go on it, and at Yor's suggestion, Lloyd lets her ride the animal. After she finishes, Anya says she wants to ride it again. Later, Anya sees people at the ocean on TV and says she wants to go there. Lloyd compromises by taking her to the pool. While Anya is initially having fun, she hears the thoughts of other kids peeing in the pool to her shock and disgust. At home, Anya says she never wants to go to the pool again and Lloyd is once again confused. One morning at the Forger home, Lloyd desperately tries to wake Anya up so she will not miss the bus and be tardy, worried that she'll get a Tonisher's bulb for too many tardies. However, Anya is too asleep to get up, and she ends up being tardy. At the school cafeteria, Anya and Becky play pretend with their matching sheepdogs. Becky tries to play a romantic story with a prince, then a battle story with twins separated at birth, but Anya doesn't understand and refuses to play along. Becky tells Anya news about how the students will be divided into new classes by performance at the end of the term. After hearing Becky's explanation, Anya is horrified that she might be all alone, so Becky encourages her to work harder. Becky adds that the group is rumored to be based on not just midterms and finals, but tomorrow's quizzes too. The girls overhear two older students gossiping about the pastries of knowledge, made by a formal royal chef, and can guarantee a spot as an imperial scholar. Hearing this, the girls rush to the dining hall where the pastries are. Anya thinks she can be a genius if she eats one, while Becky is excited to try macarons from a former royal chef. They soon see a queue of students for the pastries, but Damien and his friends run up next to them with the same goal. The server announces that there's only one order left of the special Pierre Pommier macaron set. The two groups try to be the first to get the last set, but are stunned when George has already ordered the macarons. Damien and Becky rush up to George and demand he gives the macarons to them. When George says they are his, as he bought them with his allowance, the kids remind him what he owes them. George concedes to give up four macarons out of the set of five macarons. They realize they have five people and decide to have a round of old maid to determine who gets the macarons. Anya is unaware of the rules as she never played cards before, so Becky quickly explains the rules. Damien and Emil scheme to stick Anya with the Joker, but Anya easily figures out which of their cards is the Joker with her mind reading abilities and flawlessly wins the game. Damien and his friends are in disbelief and accuse her of cheating. Damien thinks the only other explanation is that she can read minds if she's not cheating. Shocking Anya. Anya panics and suggests they play another round, where she decides to make mistakes on purpose. On Anya's turn, she purposefully takes the Joker from Ewan's deck. Damien and his friends laugh at Anya, tempting her to hit them, but Becky calms her down. Damien's turn to take a card from Anya has arrived, and her facial expressions are very easy to read. Damien easily picks out another card from her deck. Everyone else gets rid of the cards, leaving only Anya and Damien. Anya panics at the thought of not getting a macaron, thus failing her tests and being in a different class from Becky. As Damien is about to take a card, Anya begins to cry. George gives everyone their share of the macaron except Damien. After purposefully taking the Joker at the sight of her crying face, Anya offers to share half of her macaron with Damien. Damien blushes and rudely rejects her in embarrassment, walking away. The four students eat their macarons. Anya becomes fired up after eating the pastry and studies excitedly until the quizzes the next day. When the results come back, Henry Henderson shows that Anya's quiz results are just as bad as before, and the other students stare at Anya in disbelief. Becky tries to cheer up the depressed Anya so that she'll make it up on her finals. At home, Lloyd and Yor look at Anya's quiz papers while she goes to her room to sulk. Seeing her marks for the classical language test, Lloyd wonders if she's well acquainted with it due to her upbringing, but decides to brush those thoughts aside. He tells Anya that he made her favorite hamburg steak for dinner, and Anya is cheered up. Cruise Adventure Arc At Central Mall, the department store is hosting the biannual mega raffle, with the grand prize being a pair of tickets for a voyage on a cruise ship. Having completed their shopping, Anya notices the raffle and asks Lloyd for the raffle ticket they have earned to try her luck. As Anya queues for the raffle, she discovers through her telepathy that the man in charge of the event has rigged it after sticking the winning ticket to the top of the raffle box. With this information in mind, Anya pulls out the winning ticket. Back home, Anya happily 
happily parades the ticket she won as Yor arrives home. Lloyd suggests Yor go with Anya because she has work, but Yor reveals she's already going on the same boat as part of her work trip after glancing at the tickets. After hearing that Yor would be troubled if they came along on the boat, Anya's conscience tells her to give up on the trip to avoid causing Yor trouble. However, she also makes the excuse that she could help Yor with her work if she went. Wanting to go to the ocean and ride the boat, Anya throws a tantrum. Reluctant, Lloyd agrees to ask if he can get time off his work, which Sylvia grants him. The big day arrives, and as the forgers make their way to the port, Anya is very excited. Upon seeing their ship at the port, Anya is amazed by its size and shouts excitedly, and Lloyd tells her to calm down. Before Lloyd and Anya part ways with Yor, Anya wishes her mother good luck. Aboard Princess Lorelei, Anya excitedly observes the various facilities on the ship, including a pool, a circus, and the game room. Anya is eager to explore the ship on an adventure, but is disappointed upon seeing their third class suite is small and cramped, assuming that it's one of the ship's jail cells. However, she quickly recovers and is excited to sleep on a bunk bed for the first time. In the ship's atrium, Anya tells Lloyd they must explore the ship before it sinks, embarrassing her father. When she sees Lloyd still in his spy mode, Anya notes that he's not having fun. This causes Lloyd to remember Sylvia telling him to treat the trip like any other mission. Lloyd decides to refocus his efforts on attaining optimal recreation and tells Anya and tells Anya they should watch a show, while she thinks about how serious her father is. In the evening, Lloyd and Anya have dinner at a buffet, where Anya feverishly eats an array of food, hungry from playing all day. She then pauses and notes how strange it is to have dinner without Yor. Lloyd agrees and gets flustered when Anya calls him sappy. Heading to their room, they pass through the ship's shopping promenade, where Anya sees a keychain and wants it, but Lloyd refuses. However, when he assumes their conversation is most likely being heard by SSS agents, Lloyd stresses over buying the keychain, overthinking the risks of his choices. Seeing her father in this predicament, Anya starts to feel a little guilty. Suddenly, she overhears the thoughts of Hitman Sickle and Chain Barnaby, who plans on taking a bounty for himself. As Barnaby walks through the promenade, he sees Yor and her group and decides to kill her first. Anya realizes Yor and the Hitman are going to fight. Although she knows Yor can likely take care of herself, Anya fears that Yor will expose her identity and cause Lloyd to divorce Yor and abandon Anya. As Anya wonders what to do, Lloyd has decided to buy her the keychain but is shocked after Anya asks who cares and shouts at him to stay back. Anya watches apprehensively as Yor and Barnaby are about to cross paths. She knows Lloyd will see the battle if he steps outside the shop and will have even more reason to do so if he hears someone scream. Anya makes a wincing face, worried about the situation. This expression confuses Lloyd, who wonders if Anya was hurt when he first refused to buy the keychain and misreads her daughter's mental state, flattering her as she reads his thoughts. When the shop employee offers Lloyd souvenir apparel, Anya speaks up, saying that trips are supposed to be fun. She claims to be dragged down by Lloyd for not having fun, so he must be dressed like it if he wants her to have fun. Persuaded by her words, Lloyd decides to transform himself inside and out to become the quintessential fun and upbeat father. Lloyd asks for every article of clothing the shop has and heads into the fitting room to change. Anya gets ready to help Yor, but realizes that Lloyd, a master of disguise, has already finished getting dressed. Anya then hears Lloyd thinking about reworking the outfit and leaves, knowing he'll be busy. Anya runs over to Yor, who has just started her fight with Barnaby. As a confused crowd gathers around the assassins, Anya cheers Yor on. While Yor is horrified to have her daughter see her like this, Anya pretends not to notice and calls Yor a circus lady, which convinces the onlookers that they're watching a street performance. After Yor quickly incapacitates Barnaby, Anya remarks on how scary her mother is. Anya hears Lloyd finally finished with his outfit and hurries back to the shop. While asked where she went, Anya revels in the fact that she helped Yor without Lloyd suspecting a thing and is thrilled by the experience. Lloyd emerges from the fitting room dressed in an outlandish combination of clothes and accessories and believes he has achieved his goal. To his shock, Anya is unimpressed and calls him uncool. The two head back to the room and a drowsy Anya heads in the opposite direction while muttering Yor's name, eventually walking into a wall and falling asleep, forcing Lloyd to carry her. On the second day of the trip, Lloyd and Anya walk around the ship, Anya singing a little tune. She decides that to help Yor, she'll need to ditch Lloyd, who she believes will freak out if he hears about Yor's secret job. Anya sees a golf putting center and decides to hatch her plan there. To her shock, Lloyd gets a hole in one on every hole. Lloyd asks Anya if he wants to try and she does just that. However, Anya struggles to get the ball into the hole and is adamant about accomplishing it, refusing to have lunch until she gets it. 
After spending half of the day putting, Anya believes she fell into Lloyd's trap and plans more ways to ditch him. She starts with a library, where Lloyd has already read all the books in the room, while Anya gets distracted reading comics. She then attempts to use a big jigsaw puzzle, which Lloyd quickly assembles in his mind, shocking the girl as she reads his thoughts. This continues as Anya tries distracting Lloyd with more activities, but gets herself absorbed in all of them. At dinner time, Anya grimaces as she eats, in disbelief over forgetting Yor and instead enjoying herself. Meanwhile, Lloyd wonders why Anya looks upset after having fun all day and starts overthinking the problem. Anya realizes she's worrying Lloyd and says she is enjoying herself, but wishes Yor could be with them. Lloyd agrees and tells Anya that he can ask if Yor has time to meet tomorrow by sending a message through the concierge. He then says there will be fireworks after dinner and asks Anya if she wants to see them, adding that they might find Yor there. Hearing this, an excited Anya agrees to go. They head out to the deck to watch the fireworks. Anya sees a child getting a piggyback ride and tells Lloyd that she can't see the sky, prompting him to give her a piggyback ride as well. Anya looks around the crowd, then tries to listen to everyone's thoughts to find Yor, but can't due to everyone's excitement. The fireworks show starts, and Anya is in awe of the spectacle. After the show finishes, Anya tells Lloyd how exciting it was. While he's happy for her, he apologizes for not being able to find Yor in the crowd, making Anya remember her goal to help Yor. Suddenly, Lloyd overhears that there's a bomb in the ship, which Anya also learns. Wanting to help Lloyd focus on saving the boat, Anya says she wants to do more stuff and shows her father a drop in daycare. After Lloyd drops off Anya, Anya leaves to find Yor. Anya runs around the ship looking for Yor. She then hears the thoughts of an informant who plans to make his exit and mentions where Yor is. Anya hears his thoughts coming from the front of the boat and rushes to Yor's location. There, Anya finds Yor's weapon, which she had dropped earlier. While Anya tries removing it from the floorboards, she hears the thoughts of Yor who's fighting on the deck above her. Anya realizes Yor needs help and throws her weapon to the roof deck. Although it doesn't go very far up, Anya manages to incapacitate two hitmen after one of them trips on the weapon, causing a chain reaction that knocks out both men. Yor hears the commotion and is able to retrieve her weapon, which she uses to win the battle against the swordsman. Hearing that Yor won, Anya celebrates her mother's victory. Yor wonders how she found her weapon the way she did and if someone was behind it. Anya hears her thoughts and retreats, not wanting to be spotted. Running back to the daycare, Anya encounters the assassin leader, who catches the scent of explosives inside a clock in the lobby. Anya thinks about telling this to Lloyd, but doesn't know where he is and wants to avoid revealing her secret. Instead, she tells a nearby shipmate that she saw a strange man wiping a booger on the clock. While initially skeptical, the man decides to have it checked out. Anya then watches from afar as Lloyd disposes of the clock bomb and credits herself for the success. Suddenly, the daycare worker appears behind Anya, upset at her for running off. Anya says that she had to use the bathroom, and as she gets dragged back to the daycare, she says that it might not have been the last bomb, which the lady interprets as Anya needing to go to the bathroom again. At the daycare, Anya waits for Lloyd to come to pick her up, eventually falling asleep after all the excitement. The Princess Lorelei arrives at the resort island. After jumping rashly out of excitement, Lloyd warns Anya to be cautious. Lloyd becomes unnerved when he sees SSS agents nearby, and Anya convinces him that a normal father would jump in excitement as well, which Lloyd does. The pair are reunited with Yor, who received their message the day before and was able to take the whole day off. With her work done, the forgers spend the rest of the day touring the island to enjoy the resort accommodations and activities. Walking around town, zip lining, riding a tandem bike, cave exploring, riding horses in a swing, and sightseeing. At a petting zoo, Anya approaches a flock of sheep and plays with them, comparing their fluffiness to bonds. Anya then points at a scuba diving poster, insisting that she wants to dive into the ocean and look at the fish next. Yor internally worries about wearing a bikini at the risk of exposing her new chest wound, which makes Anya change her mind, saying she doesn't want to be eaten by shark. To her luck, Yor finds a rental poster for swimwear and decides to wear a rash guard bathing suit instead. She agrees to scuba dive with Anya and assures her that there won't be any sharks present in the water. The forgers scuba dive, then surf soon afterward. Clutching a surfboard, Anya readies herself to be pushed into a wave by Yor, but gets propelled with force as Yor forgets to hold back her strength. She's taken by the wave and launched into the air, but Lloyd quickly comes to her rescue. Once the wave has passed, Anya asks Lloyd to go again, but gets strictly rejected. Meanwhile, Yor panics and apologizes for the mishap. Back in town, Anya is delighted that they had fun the entire day. Suddenly, Yor is hit with exhaustion from the night before, and she collapses into Lloyd, sending her into a deep sleep. Anya becomes tired as well, and she falls asleep. With the two girls knocked out in his arms, Lloyd is embarrassed at having to carry them back to the boat. After the cruise, the forgers come back home and are welcomed by Bond and Frankie. Afterward, they commune in the living room over coffee. While Lloyd goes out for a briefing, Yor and Anya sleep soundly in the living room, where Anya has made a drawing of their great cruise adventure. 
As the students return to Eden Academy after the midterm break, Anya confidently walks to her class with a smile. She enters and is greeted by Becky, who notices that she has become a little tan and asks her friend where she went during her break. Anya tells Becky about going to the grandest luxury liner in all of Estonia. Becky and Damien are surprised by this, the latter saying that the forgers are worthy of coming over to his house. At least, that's what Anya imagines will happen. In reality, Becky brushes it off as nothing special, surprising Anya. Anya says her trip was special and struggles to say the ship's name. Becky recognizes it as the Princess Lorelei and says she went on it before the start of school, mentioning how she stayed in the Imperial Suite. Anya is shocked and says she stayed in the third class prison cell. Emil laughs at her while Ewan remarks how Anya isn't embarrassed to admit to staying in a lower class suite. Anya hears their insults and reddens up in embarrassment and irritation. The boys brag about their fancy escapades during the break and Becky talks about how she had her father meet the famous starlet Rachel at a party. The other students gather around Becky praising her and her family and ask about her meeting with Rachel. Wanting a share of the attention, Anya gets up and exaggerates about the villains on the boat. The students ask about the villains, thinking they're from a show. Anya claims the villains were from foreign lands, making the students believe they're international movie stars and asks who they were. Anya decides to tell them about Sickle and Chain Barnaby, who she calls Sickly Chain Bartably. The students have no idea what Anya's talking about and only ask more questions. Anya stammers around, talking about the abilities of the enemies. The students laugh at Anya, saying she got attacked by pirates. One of them points out how it would have been on the news, and Anya remembers how the incident on the cruise was covered up. She tells her classmates that the enemies were secret villains from beneath the sea, the Octo People. Anya tries to continue her story of slaying the Octo People, but the students ignore her to ask Becky about Rachel. Watching from the side, Damien and his friends are impressed about how much Anya is making herself look like a fool. Their teacher walks in and tells the students to take their seats. He asks if the students made the most of their midterm break, and a student mentions Anya's story. The rest of the class bursts into laughter while Anya's face flushes in embarrassment. At the end of the day, Becky comforts a gloomy Anya, saying she can understand the desire to make oneself look better. She says that there's nothing wrong with it if it helps Anya to become the person she wants to be. While Anya's happy to hear this, George interjects, warning her not to lie too much, lest she becomes an outcast like him. When Anya returns home, Yor notices her glum demeanor and asks if something's wrong. After everyone sits in the living room, Anya tells the adults how her classmates mocked her for falsely boasting about her trip. Lloyd asks why she felt the need to lie in the first place, and she tells him that she wanted attention. Lloyd, Yuri, and Yor tell her that lying is wrong, and to be more honest, but their thoughts say otherwise. The room falls silent, and Anya says she'll try to stop lying, as being a liar seems pretty rough. Wise arc. Inspired by a seduction scene from Burn Lint in Love, Becky calls up Anya's home and pretends that she happens to be dropping by their house while in the neighborhood. Soon after, Becky is at the door, confusing Anya with her quick arrival. Becky's thoughts reveal her intent to confess her love to Lloyd, though Martha disapproves. Anya calls over Lloyd, announcing Becky's visit. Lloyd welcomes Becky to their home with a bright smile and thanks her for being a good friend to Anya, causing Becky to fall backward with a love-struck expression and reminding Anya of Fiona. Anya takes Becky on a quick tour of the house, but the gap between their financial status is evident when Becky assumes their living room is a storage vestibule and is amazed at Anya's room being smaller than her dog's doghouse, leading Anya to stop their tour. After finding out yours out walking Bond, Becky begins fantasizing about her and Lloyd in a similar situation from her drama. With her marrying Lloyd, Anya is shocked but gets persuaded after reading Becky's mind about the benefits of being her mother. Deciding to choose world-class chefs over Yor, Anya decides to help Becky with her plan, asking Lloyd to play with them and cheering on her friend. Lloyd chats with Becky, trying to gain more intel on the activities of her father, while she gets flustered as she wonders if Lloyd is interested in her. Meanwhile, Anya takes enjoyment in this while reading their minds. Yor arrives home with Bond and greets Becky. Anya tries to introduce Bond to Becky, but she's too preoccupied with planning on defeating Yor to notice. Becky tries using seduction techniques she learned from her television dramas, letting her hair down and flipping it, and Anya mimics her movements. Yor seats Becky beside Lloyd and serves everyone tea. Becky leans on Lloyd's arm, pretending to be tipsy after drinking the tea. Distraught at the notion of somehow pouring alcohol into Becky's tea, Yor rushes her to the hospital, despite Lloyd telling her to stop. Lloyd and Anya soon catch up with them at a park. Anya then watches Yor single-handedly wreck a strongman game with her strength, rendering everyone else speechless. Lloyd and Anya watch Becky asking to be under Yor's tutelage, then going home to train. Martha arrives and is confused at the sight of Yor training Becky, while Anya thinks Yor is more fun. In Cecil Hall, Henry berates the students for the recent increase in tardiness and late homework assignments, Anya in particular. As Anya 
and Becky leave the classroom, they're interrupted by Damien, who mocks Anya's tardiness, and bets she'll be the first to be expelled for getting eight volts. Becky defends Anya and begins to bicker with Emil and Ewan, with the pair eventually yelling loudly that the three of them will run through the school in their underpants if Damien gets a tonnature's bolt. Before Damien can rebuke them, Bill Watkins runs towards them, warning them to run away before it's too late. Bill warns the students of Donna Schlag of the disciplinary committee. He explains her prior absence and a fearsome reputation for handing out tonnature's bolt for any infraction, rumored to have single-handedly expelled over a hundred students. He tells them to run away as his classroom has already fallen victim to old lady Tonitris and faints. Before the students can escape, Donna is already in front of them and introduces herself, instructing them to line up and prepare for a bag inspection. In the classroom, Donna checks their bags, giving out tonitures bolts for snacks and playing cards she finds in the students' bags. To Anya's horror, she realizes Donna is gleefully having fun with punishing the students. Damien is relaxed since he and his friends didn't bring anything prohibited. However, Donna punishes a student with a tonitures for not bringing a handkerchief. She recounts the tale of an honor student who wiped his hands on his pants after forgetting to bring his handkerchief, earning him him the nickname of Mr. P Pants, and eventually getting expelled as a troublemaker. The students quickly check for their handkerchiefs, including Damien, who is dismayed to find that he didn't bring his handkerchief. Anya initially takes joy in Damien's distress, but panics when he thinks he'll not be able to face his father if he gets a tonitures bolt. Anya quickly offers her handkerchief to Damien, reassuring him that she always brings two. Damien safely avoids getting a tonitures, but Anya isn't as fortunate, realizing she didn't bring a second handkerchief, so Donna gives her a tonitures. Seeing Anya cry, Damien feels conflicted and tries to admit the truth. However, Anya sees that Donna intends to give them two bolts each if she finds out they tricked her and quickly stops him. After the bag inspection, Damien tries to express his gratitude in a roundabout manner. Anya doesn't fully understand, but is happy that she's gotten closer to Damien despite her new tonitress. Anya returns home to tell Lloyd that they've gotten closer. While he's elated to hear this, he quickly notices the tonitress on Anya's chest and faints. Lloyd is placed on the sofa to rest until he jolts up in a cold sweat, and both Yor and Anya are relieved to see him awake. Anya asks if he had a dream and tries to read his thoughts, but Lloyd's mind is cloudy as he says he doesn't remember. Anya pats her father's head, assuring him that there's nothing to be afraid of, which embarrasses him. Lloyd wonders why he was asleep on the sofa, and Anya reminds him that he fainted after she got a tonitures bolt. Lloyd thinks about how this damages Operation Strix, and Anya apologizes for messing up. Lloyd then asks Anya if it brought her closer to Damien, which she confirms. Lloyd says it's a good thing, telling her that friends are important and to cherish them. After Bond's stomach growls, Lloyd decides to prepare dinner, and upon Anya's request, he makes hot onion soup. Afterward, the Forgers sit in the living room to enjoy their meal. Friendship Schemes Arc At the end of the school day, Martha and Becky say goodbye to Anya as they leave. While Anya waits for the school bus, someone announces that the bus driver got sick and that the next service will be late. With nothing to do, Anya decides to stay and wait at the bus stop. Passing by, Henry sees her alone and asks her to help him carry some stuff. Anya is hesitant, but agrees when he offers her some tea cakes. As they walk back to school, Henderson asks Anya if she's having fun at school. Anya says it's okay, but quickly asks if she'll get a tonitress for not having fun. Henderson assures her that she won't and can rely on him if she has any problems. Anya casually says she's fine, which shocks Henderson since he knows Anya has received two tonitures bolts and isn't bothered by it. Reading his mind, Anya is also shocked about that since she completely forgot about it. Worried about not getting her sweets, Anya says she's a little worried about the tonitresses, calming Henderson. Anya tells him she now carries many handkerchiefs since her last tonitress was for not having one. Henderson tries to explain the importance of preparedness and personal grooming, citing them as building blocks for elegance and how Donna's harshness is her way of keeping students in line. Anya doesn't understand him, which Henderson attributes to her youth. Anya tries to impress him by saying she understands while spitting out a nonsensical response, shocking Henderson even more as he realizes Anya completely misunderstood him. Henderson instructs Anya to remain disciplined at all times, and Anya asks if she'll get Estella for this. Henderson understands that Anya wants to be an Imperial Scholar and asks for her reason. Anya thinks of Lloyd's mission but ends up saying that the Stellas look cool. Henderson believes Anya is superficial and reminds her that she said she wanted to be like the headmaster in their interview. Anya doesn't remember she said that and wants the stars as soon as possible. Henderson angrily tells Anya not to disrespect the Imperial Scholars and Stella since all those students worked hard to achieve the title. He takes her to a hall displaying alumni from Eden Academy who are all Imperial Scholars. Anya realizes she must work hard one day at a time. Just like with Lloyd's mission, she asks Henderson if she can become an Imperial Scholar, to which he says he can't answer as every student must decide for themselves, and there's no need to rush. They arrive at Henry's office, and as promised, 
He gives Anya some sweets. They talk about the cakes, and Anya says she likes that they're sweet, and Henry is shocked by her shallowness. He asks Anya if she would like to review some problems she got wrong on a quiz, but she leaves when she finishes eating. Anya arrives home and greets her family before noticing her worn out parents. Reading their mind, she realizes how hard they work. With newfound resolve, Anya asks Lloyd to study with her, but he assumes that she got another tonitress and collapses, with Yor catching him. Before Yor heads out shopping, she asks Anya if there's anything she wants. Anya asks for some tea cakes Henry gave her, but can't remember the name, so Yor promises to find them, along with an amazing cake that Anya says Damien owes her. Yor returns home with several boxes of cake and the news that she met Melinda Desmond, to the surprise of Lloyd and Anya. While Yor tells Anya about all the cakes she got from Melinda, Lloyd begins to suspect that the meeting was premeditated. Hearing his thoughts, Anya loudly clarifies why Yor went out, dissuading his suspicions. With Yor and Melinda able to interact, Lloyd conceives Plan C, the mommy friend scheme. Depending on Melinda's standing within the Desmond family, this plan could provide an even more direct route to Donovan than Plan B. Reading his mind, Anya is shocked and sees this as a battle of friendship schemes. Determined not to lose, Anya runs off to study, and Lloyd notices this new motivation. In her room, Anya tries thinking of ways to become better friends with Damien, but ends up falling asleep. Heading to Eden Academy, a tired Anya reflects on not having made any plans to befriend Damien. After Becky greets Anya, she asks for a way to get closer to Damien, which excites Becky. She tells Anya about a technique in which a girl holds bread in her mouth and bumps into a boy while turning a corner, which will link their fates forever. Becky then buys a yakisoba burger and stuffs it in Anya's mouth. As Damien and his friends approach, Anya moves in for a friendship crash. To her surprise, Damien dodges her attack, knowing she might do something like this. While Anya kneels on the floor with the food in her mouth, Damien and his friends make fun of her lowly appearance. Anya angrily shouts at them, but accidentally spits the burger into Damien's head. Both buns place in a similar manner to Anya's hair buns. Emil and Ewan tease him, and Anya apologizes for wasting the food. Aggravated, Damien yells at her, shocking Anya. His friends warn him not to hit her, while Becky tells Anya they need to run. The next day, Anya confronts Damien, demanding the cake she believes she was promised. Damien says he never promised her anything, then yells at her for demanding anything after she spilled noodles on him. Damien wonders if Anya has an ulterior motive but is relieved she only wants cake instead of asking to meet his father. Hearing his thoughts, Anya then tells Damien that she wants to go to his house with her family instead. While Damien gets flustered, Becky tells Anya she's being too aggressive, and Ewan says the idea of her family interacting with the Desmonds is laughable. In response, Anya says that Yor has become friends with Melinda. The kids are shocked to hear this, and Damien demands to know if his mother said anything about him. He thinks that if she learns about any of his dark preschool era secrets, he's done for. He then thinks about said secrets from wetting the bed to not sleeping without his favorite plush toy. Anya sees his thoughts and gets amused. She assures Damien that Melinda didn't say much about him, and he becomes stoic. Damien turns around in a huff and says Anya's family is no different from the rest, a bunch of flies buzzing around the Desmond name. Anya gets irritated and says she and her family are serious, referring to the mission. But Damien and Becky interpret it as romantic. Later that day, when Lloyd returns home and wonders if Plan C can finally get moving, Anya fears she will fall behind and starts to anguish over the meaning of friendship. Red Circus Arc All students from the first grade are seen in school buses heading to the museum. Anya gets excited about going on a field trip, but Becky corrects that it's a cultural experience. Anya prepares a strange plan in which she makes an ugly face at Damien, which he will call ugly, and the teacher will come and try to expel him for lying. Then Anya will intervene to defend him, and they'll become friends. This goes wrong as Damien gets mad at her, but he wonders if her odd behavior towards him is because he hasn't returned a favor since Anya got her tonitress for him. He tries to take some cake he brought and give it to her, but is interrupted by Emil and Ewan. Anya checks her bag for food, only to show Becky that she brought peanuts. Suddenly, the bus starts to take another direction, and some terrorists get on, immobilize the dorm tutor who was on the bus as a monitor, and report to the students that their bus was hijacked, scaring Anya and the others. Billy Squire, the leader of the terrorists, start passing by the bus with a rifle in his hand, scaring all the children and causing them to start thinking too much about how scared they are and that they want everything to end. This causes Anya to start feeling bad since she reads all the children's thoughts, and Becky notices that Anya feels bad and worries about her. Bill gets up and tells his classmates to calm down and tells them help is on the way. Billy notices this and decides to point the rifle at him so that he stops talking, but the boy's words manage to calm all the kids, making Anya feel better. Billy begins to tell them that he knows how important their parents are, while he begins to call the Eden students by their surnames and for the work of their parents, and tells them how they were born with all the luck in the world, threatening them to dare to pray to their parents to use the power they occupy to rescue them. Anya stares at him while she thinks about her parents, 
Anya decides to read the Red Circus members' minds to get an idea of where they're going. To do this, Anya loudly shouts that she has to go to the bathroom, and one of the members tells her to hold it in while thinking about where they're headed. Hey, Peter Park. Becky hears Anya repeat the location and asks how she found out, and Anya lies that she read their lips. With the location determined, the girls devise a plan to send a message to the people outside. Anya writes a letter, but because it's unreadable, Becky writes it instead. Damien notices them acting strangely and sends them a letter asking what they're planning. Anya throws him a reply, which Damien can't read, so Becky has to write it again. Now aware of the plan, Damien decides to distract the terrorists. The girls take advantage of the situation, and Becky quickly opens the window to let Anya throw her ID with the Black Bell's help code out of the bus, attracting the attention of some passersby. Billy notices this, then grabs a collar and puts it on Anya. A confused Anya tries to touch the collar to see what it is, but Billy tells her not to. He then reveals to the children that it's a bomb, and warns them that if someone on the bus tries anything else, he'll blow it up along with Anya. Anya is initially frightened by this, but realizes it's a fluke after Billy thinks to himself that it's a fake and is only a distraction to keep the children quiet. Anya calms down, casually plopping back to her seat and saying she's hungry, and her classmates are shocked by her lack of distress. After hearing Damien's thoughts reacting to her, Anya taunts him by whacking on the bomb with her smug smile, which frightens everyone. Anya gets dizzy by their overwhelming thoughts, and Damien assumes she was just doing it for show and didn't want the others to be scared. Damien approaches Billy and asks him to attack Anya's bomb to him instead, surprising Anya. Billy acknowledges this by putting another bomb on Damien, shocking the boy. On the other hand, Anya happily says they match, which enrages him. Anya notices Damien fearing for his life, so she takes his hand, assuring him that it'll be okay and not to be scared. She then whispers to him that she overheard the terrorists saying the bombs are fake. Damien denies his fear, yanking his hand away from hers. Becky calls Anya mature for this, which makes her so proud that she knocks on her bomb again. This scares Becky and Damien, who calls Anya in idiot. Suddenly, they're interrupted by a loud pop, and the bus starts to swerve. The bus makes a stop, and the students are surprised to be unharmed. Police surround the bus shortly after, and the children are relieved to see them. While the students get excited at the thought of being rescued, Billy quickly shoots it down by firing at the ceiling and yelling at them to sit back in their seats. Billy and the other terrorists wonder how the police managed to get ahead of them, remarking that the students couldn't have known where they're going. Watching from her seat, Anya gets nervous. Billy then makes the students cover the bus windows with black sheets, then steps outside with Damien in tow to make his demands with the police. While Billy waits for a response, the children are left to wait in anxiety, and Anya gets dizzy from their overwhelming thoughts. Later, the Black Belt Company provides the children with rations and water brought to them by Henry, and Anya is surprised to see him present. Henry tells the students to make sure they eat, but Anya is already eating and exclaims how hungry she is, shocking the housemaster. While eating the rations, Anya remarks that she's had better and worse food than this. Anya reads Billy's mind and learns about his past and daughter, Biddy. After the Red Circus is told that the second bus has been secured with their comrades dead, the driver, Vadim, plans to explode the bus once the strike force storms inside. Anya hears his thoughts and is shocked that they have a real bomb. She then hears the thoughts of a secret police planning on storming the bus. As their thoughts grow closer to the bus, Anya worries that they'll all explode when the terrorists find out. Determined to do something about this, Anya bravely gets up from her seat with Billy set in her sights. So surprising her classmates. As Billy notices her, Anya realizes she should have thought of what to say before getting up. Anya considers mentioning the secret police's advance, but fears they'll explode the bus immediately. She then thinks about what to say as Henry tells her to sit back down. Suddenly, Anya gets the idea to ask for more rations, as the police held back when the students were eating. Anya's bold statement shocks everyone, and Billy threatens to detonate her collar bomb. Anya is undeterred because she knows it's fake, and says she's not afraid mirroring Biddy's speech. This unnerves Billy as he begins to see his daughter and Anya. He begins thinking about Biddy's words and Anya tries to parrot some of them while reading his mind. However, Anya realizes he doesn't want to do his misdeeds while she's on the bus, so she refuses. To everyone's shock once again, Billy yells at Anya saying that the Eden students are selfish elites and yells at her to get off. Anya refuses and demands the rations, making Billy believe that the children aren't eating enough at home and is astonished that Anya is willing to ask for food for her classmates sake, embarrassing the girl. Billy asks Anya why she's doing this for everyone and after some thinking, Anya repeats Lloyd's motivation for becoming a spy, wanting to make a world where kids don't need to cry. A noble goal, although she's a kid herself, Billy's resolve is shaken even more, but Vadim tries to 
motivate him by avenging his daughter and aims his gun at Anya. But Henry stands in the way. Moved by the memory of Biddy, Billy takes the group's guns and bags. He then steps out of the bus and surrenders, dumbfounding Anya. In a rage, Vadim tries to drive away, but gets blocked by armored police vehicles. As the bus comes to a sudden halt, Anya falls face first to the floor. Vadim picks up Anya as he leaves the bus, waving her around as his hostage. However, Martha leaps from above and immobilizes Vadim with a taser. Martha safely catches Anya and the police move in to arrest the terrorists. After the hostages are freed, Anya waves to a crying Becky, who runs over to her and Martha. At Eden Academy, an award ceremony is held for Anya, Becky, Damien, and Bill as they each receive a Stella star for their courageous efforts during the hijacking crisis. As the students celebrate their achievement, Henry reflects on how no one was hurt during the crisis. Going back to the arrest of the Red Circus members, the information blackout gets lifted, and the students' guardians are informed and instructed to pick up their children. One by one, the students get picked up by their parents until only Anya and Damien are left. Damien praises Anya for what she did and apologizes for how he treated her before. Anya also praises Damien, calling the time he asked for her bomb to be put on him a hero move. Damien quickly gets flustered and says anyone would have done that, as that is how friends look out for each other. Anya is stunned by his statement and believes she has fulfilled the friendship scheme. Anya tries to propose going to Damien's house, claiming that is what friends do, along with introducing their parents to each other and talking about world peace, making Damien double back on calling her a friend. Damien then looks to the children with their parents and says there's no point in trying to cozy up to him since he barely has a relationship with his parents. Anya pitifully pats him on the back, and he retorts that her parents are also not there. Just as the police chief offers to give Anya a ride home, Yor speeds over to her. Yor asks Anya if she's alright, which she initially affirms, then begins bawling in her mother's arms. As Yor comforts Anya, Anya hears the thoughts of Lloyd, who had raced back to Berlin from his mission, and he thinks of making Anya's favorite dinner when he returns home, which excites her. Melinda arrives shortly after and reunites with Damien. Anya hears Melinda's thoughts that affectionately dote on Damien and remind her of Yuri. After Damien mentions his father, Anya is taken aback by Melinda's negative thoughts on Damien conflicting with her motherly affection. At the Forger home, Anya celebrates her new Stella star while the family has breakfast. While Lloyd and Yor are proud of her, they scold her for her recklessness during the bus hijack. Lloyd drives Anya to school and apologizes for not being there to pick her up, although Anya's fine since she knows he was. Anya looks outside and sees a family, then asks Lloyd if the families that came to pick up their kids love them more, thinking about how strange Melinda was with Damien. Lloyd assumes that Anya now resents him because he didn't come to pick her up and wonders how to overcome this. Hearing his thoughts, Anya steers Lloyd into buying her some cake after school. At school, Anya, now going by Double Starlight Anya, has gained an increase in popularity among her classmates. Seeing this, Anya begins making plans to make many friends that could conquer the world. Damien steps in and tells their classmates how Anya is a commoner. However, this boosts her image as their classmates gain even more admiration for her. Intrigued by the lower class, the kids ask Anya what kinds of meals she eats, and she replies with the breakfast you are made for her. Anya believes that instead of pushing to get into Damien's house, she should have done the opposite and invited him to hers. Now dubbing this reverse scheme the B plan, Anya tries to impress Damien with her family's strength. To get good responses from her classmates, Anya begins embellishing the stories of her life as a commoner, worrying Becky. Becky chimes in by mentioning how she and Anya have gotten trained by Yor, who's strong. Anya becomes jealous that her classmates now want to get trained by Yor, so she makes up an excuse and tries to train them herself. Damien butts in to stop them, and Anya directs her frustration towards him, calling him a jerk. Damien fires back by insulting Anya and her family, making the girl tear up a little. With this defeat, their classmates now believe that Damien and his family are stronger, and Anya begins to bawl as she angrily shouts that she's supposed to be the stronger one. Damien apologizes to Anya and promises to buy her candy, which gets her to stop crying. Emil and Ewan are shocked by what he just did, but Damien reasons that properly apologizing makes him the stronger man, which Anya rebukes and the two start bickering. Their classmates leave them behind, and the two end up arriving late to class. After a half day at school, Anya insists on playing, so Lloyd takes her and Bond to the dog park, where he also has his meeting with Sylvia. As the two spies talk in code, Anya recognizes the disguised Sylvia as Lloyd's boss and approaches her to look at Aaron. As Lloyd recalls meeting Aaron beforehand, Anya also recognizes him as one of the bad guy's dogs. Bond and Aaron get close, and with her telepathy, Anya can hear the two talk. Bond doesn't remember Aaron, 
which upsets him, and having finished their meeting, Sylvia decides to leave. However, Anya knows Bond wants to play with Aaron, so the two run after Sylvia, asking for his name and how he got it. Anya then declares that the two dogs should have a showdown to see who's better, and to Lloyd's surprise, Sylvia accepts. After Sylvia promises to remove his new extra mission if he wins, Lloyd quickly accepts. Reading their minds, Anya's entertained by their feud. The first event is the obstacle course, and whoever finishes it to the end faster wins. Aaron and Sylvia earn a flawless 39 seconds, impressing Anya. On the contrary, Bond stumbles across the course and finishes at over 2 minutes. However, Lloyd refuses to back down. The next event is tracking and retrieving, in which the dogs must find their opposing owner's handkerchiefs, which have been hidden around the park. The dogs begin to familiarize themselves with Lloyd and Sylvia's scents, who have wiped away their scent as much as possible. The dogs start tracking, and Bond quickly retrieves the handkerchief from Sylvia's jacket, although he was actually tracking the dried pasta stuck on it. The final event is frisbee tracking, and the dog who can catch a frisbee thrown the farthest wins. Bond suddenly foresees Lloyd and Sylvia throwing their frisbees, but a sudden gust of wind brings it back to them, and they restart. Anya sees the vision, and she and Bond smugly believe that their match is theirs. The events of the vision play out as Lloyd and Sylvia throw their frisbees, but Bond stays in place to Lloyd's confusion. As the sudden gust of wind comes, the frisbee returns to Bond, who runs over to catch it as Anya cheers him on. However, the frisbee hits him in the face and he falls over, to Lloyd and Anya's concern, and Sylvia decides to call it a die. Afterward, Anya tells Aaron that she had fun playing with him, and together with Bond, the three play some more. Sylvia prepares to leave with Aaron, and Anya accidentally strikes a nerve when she says that someone at her age had fun. Despite that, Sylvia confirms that she did have fun, and tells Anya they should play again sometime, to Anya's excitement. Mole Hunt Arc Chaos ensues as Lloyd welcomes a drunk Yor home, and sleepy Anya mutters that they get noisy when they kiss. The next morning, Anya wakes up early and Lloyd prepares her breakfast, reminding her to get ready for her trip to the zoo with Becky. Moments later, Martha and Becky arrive at the Forger residence to pick up Anya. Before they leave, Martha has to muffle Becky's mouth to shut her when she tries to chat with Lloyd, and Lloyd thanks them for letting Anya go with them. Anya says goodbye to her dad, asking him to come home early, and he retorts that she's the one leaving. Anya has a fun time at the zoo with Becky, so much so that she quickly fell asleep as soon as she got home. The next day, the family has breakfast made by Yor, and Anya says her cooking has gotten a little better. Hearing his thoughts, Anya is shocked to learn that Lloyd had a spy battle yesterday. Before Lloyd goes to his room, he tells Anya to come to him if she needs help with homework, but Anya tells him to go ahead and rest. Yor and Anya sit together in the living room where Anya draws several animals. After Yor asks if she had fun at the zoo, Anya excitedly tells her about it and shows her a stuffed toy lion she got there. Jealous at Anya's new toy, Bond ruffles his fur to imitate a lion's mane to impress Anya. After attempting to imitate other animals at Anya's request, Yor brushes Bond's fur to normal, saying he looks better the way he is. Yor comments how Bond's fur has become more shinier since they got him, and Anya asks to be shiny too. Frankie makes a sudden appearance with things that Lloyd asked for. Anya gets the idea to brush Frankie's hair, and the four start to engage in a noisy chatter, with Anya and Bond attempting to make Frankie's hair shiny and silky. Anya walks through the school entrance and is quickly greeted by Becky. The two then see Damien and his friend standing in the middle of the path, with Damien holding something in his hand. Hearing his thoughts, Anya is surprised to learn that Damien has tea cakes, and she asks him if they're for her. Damien rudely denies her and runs off to class, confusing Anya. In class, Anya hears how determined Damien is to give her the cakes without being noticed. Assuming they're beneficial toward Operation Strix, Anya becomes determined to get the sweets, and also because she craves them. Anya whispers to Becky that she needs help getting alone time with Damien, which excites her best friend. Becky suggests inviting Damien to the courtyard, and tells her to write him a note to meet there on their next break. Anya writes a note and passes it down to Damien with the help of her classmates, but it's completely ineligible. Becky makes Anya write it again, and after struggling for a bit, she manages to write a legible note to Damien. Despite the note looking quite threatening, Damien and accepts. Before leaving for the courtyard, Anya tells Becky that she can't come with her. Becky agrees, but her thoughts reveal that she'll be watching them anyway. Damien and Anya meet up, but are annoyed that the others brought their friends and begin bickering. They decide to go somewhere else to be alone and run off, but their friends persist in chasing after them. After failing to lose them and arguing with Anya some more, Damien becomes frustrated and decides to stop trying to give her the cakes. Not wanting Damien to leave without giving her the cakes, Anya grabs his arm to stop him from going. Damien becomes flustered and asks if she wants to fight, but Anya tells him that she just wants to be his friend. With their friends having suddenly vanished,
vanished, Damien once again tries to give Anya the cakes and begins explaining himself, though the cake is the only thing on her mind. They're interrupted by Henry, who yells at them for not being in class after the warning bell. Henry then confiscates the cakes from Damien and punishes the two to come to his office after class. After he tells them to go to class, Anya and Damien glare at each other, upset that they got in trouble. After writing apologies at Henry's office, their housemaster invites them to have tea with him, and he brings out the cakes he confiscated, which excites Anya. While they enjoy the treats, Damien tells her they're even. When Henry inquires, Anya almost reveals that Damien forgot his handkerchief back then. Damien quickly yells over her. After finishing her cake, Anya tells Damien they can now be good friends. Damien gets confused and asks why she called him out in the first place and why she wanted him to come alone if she didn't want to fight. Damien reimagines the scene of Anya clinging to him while saying that she wants to be friends, and after seeing these thoughts, Anya gets creeped out and changes her mind about being friends. Damien gets angry and says she can't take it back, and as they argue once again, Henry gets annoyed and orders them to be quiet and go home. Anya goes with Yor as she takes Bond out for a walk. At Anya's request, they go to the park where Anya happily enjoys herself on the slide and even shows Yor the burn mark she got on her new clothes from playing on the slide. Anya overhears two boys gossiping about an old man sitting on a bench nearby and claiming that he could be a spy. Hearing this, Anya is determined to take him down and reads his mind to learn his plot only to learn that the old man wishes to go home after getting lost. The boys then scare the man away after accusing him of being a spy while Anya watches dumbfoundedly. Anya starts playing on a log bridge and encounters the old man once again. After the man almost slips on the bridge, he panics and calls Anya Barbara, but quickly comes to his senses shortly afterward. Yor arrives to assist and the forgers learn about the old man's plight and that he moved into the area recently. As Yor helps the man think of any clues, Anya tries to read his mind but finds nothing helpful. After reading a note, in the old man's jacket, the forgers help the man get to the market for shopping. The old man begins mumbling, but Yor can't hear what he's saying, so Anya reads his mind and hears him mentioning adding the two to his will. So she claims to Yor that he'll give them lots of money if they return him home. At the market, the old man reveals that he used to teach at the university nearby and mumbles to himself how badly it was affected during the war. As the group walks around the market, Anya continues reading the man's thoughts, the man's thoughts to help guide Yor, but they end up back at the park. The group tries again, but finds themselves at a mafia branch office, a flower shop, and atop a tower. The old man becomes gloomy for causing the family so much trouble, but Anya says she had fun on this adventure. The old man pats Anya's head and thanks her for not mocking his failings. He decides to treat her with a waffle, mentioning that he sees her like a granddaughter. After Anya gets her waffle, Yor notices a piece of paper fall from the old man's pocket. After seeing that it's a coupon, Anya proudly reveals that it's a winning ticket from the raffle at the candy shop in their neighborhood. The old man remembers that he went to the candy shop to get sweets, giving the group a clue to the location of his home. Bond suddenly goes off on his own after finding the man Sentrail, and the others follow after him. They follow Bond back to their apartment, where it's revealed that the old man, Sigmund, and his wife, Barbara, are the forger's new neighbors. After the family formally welcomes them to the neighborhood, they bear witness to how affectionate the two are, with Anya mimicking their smooching sounds. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Hope you enjoyed. Adrian out.